the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Romans chapter 10, I meant to say, forgive me. Romans 10, let me read verse 14 and 15. Apologies, I'm not sure it will be projected for now. It says, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? So look how it works. You are sent to preach. You preach so they hear. They hear so they believe. They believe and they are saved. So if there is no salvation, it's because there is no faith. And if there is no faith, it's because there is no hearing. And if there is no hearing, it is because there is no communicator of that truth. And if there is no communicator of that truth, it is because he is not sent. This is what the Bible says. Are we together? So every time we see that God has sent people, we know that in the presence of a preacher, there must be the hearing of faith. And when there is the hearing of faith, then there is believing. And whenever there is believing, there will always be a manifestation of those things that were spoken by the Lord. And so I pray that within the few minutes that we have to share tonight, that you minimize distraction and let your heart be inclined to the word. Because when the word comes, it comes to lift. Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2. The Bible says how that he told me, son of God, rise upon your feet and ezekiel had no strength to rise verse 2 says and the spirit entered me when he spake unto me the communications of god's word is more than a lecture beyond the words and the thoughts communicated there is an impartation of the spirit behind that word and it makes that word fruitful and it makes it produce results. Hallelujah. I'll be teaching along the line of the theme. And I just want to introduce us tonight to the whole idea of enlargement. And then we'll look at a few dynamics by tomorrow. But I believe with all my heart that anything that is here not planted and ordained of the Christ will not survive these sessions. Nadoka Kasunanka Ubangi Chika Isayabo Nakir Mama Sunanka Ubangi Chika Nadoka Kasunanka Ubangi Chika Isayabo Nakir Mama Sunanka Ubangi Chika Mundo kaka sunanka, ubangi chika isayabo. Nato kaka sunanka, ubangi chika. We we'll raise your banner high. We we'll shine your light so bright. We we'll sing in honor of you. Lord, we will raise your banner high. 
will shine your light so bright. We'll sing in honor of you. Nada o cacaço na ca, o bangue de caixa e a rabo. Na que uma maço na ca, o bangue de. Very simple song. Nada o cacaço na ca, o bangue de caixa e a rabo. Na que uma maço na ca. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 8. Oh dear. I wish, I hope that they walk on the projection so that we can make progress. Turn with me, if you will, to Proverbs. Let's begin tonight from there. Proverbs chapter 4. And verse 18. Did I say 8? Apologies. 18. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18. Here's what the Bible says. The Bible says, But the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. That the path of the just is in the similitude of a shining light that shines ever brighter, some versions will say, unto the perfect day. In redemption, all believers, with no exception, please pay attention, all believers with no exception have the heritage and the destiny of the glory that excels. We call it the ever-increasing glory. Are we together? The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Then it says, we all with unveiled face, beholding him as in a mirror, the glory of God now. It says, we are changed from glory to glory. So advancement and excellence is the heritage of the believer in Christ. You have to understand this. On account, I hope you realize that the Christian faith is predicated upon Jesus Christ who came as a revelation of the love of the Father. The foundation of the Christian experience is not just God, it's Jesus Christ. Sent. The Bible calls him the express image of the invisible God. Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3. It says, God who in sundry times and diverse manners spake through the prophets had in these last days spoken to us through his son whom he had appointed to be heir over all things are we together and then the bible calls him the express image of the invisible god so the foundation of a believer's journey starts with jesus christ not miracles not signs not wonders jesus christ is the foundation the focal points the epicenter of the Christian experience. If for any reason you route your Christian experience through any other angle, miracles, signs, wonders, breakthrough, eventually you will collide with error. The journey has to start with Jesus Christ. All the other provisions will come on the way, but he becomes the foundation and he becomes the focal point of the Christian faith. Are we together? That means every other thing we are going to discuss in this conference and in any sermon must be derived from that standpoint. It is because of Jesus and the possibilities that his death has provided, his burial, his ascension, his exaltation. It is from that standpoint we can now begin to examine the implication of what happened when he died and resurrected. Are we together? Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3, the Bible says, Paul speaking to the church in Ephesus. He began to mentor them and he said, Blessed be the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Who had blessed us. Are we together? Blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Not some. All spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. You have to understand this. So, we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings 
that reside in the realm of the spirit and only routed to the saints through the office of the Christ. That means you cannot obtain any true spiritual blessing in isolation to Christ. He is the door, he said. The door that opens you up. A door means an authorized channel. If a visitor comes to your house through a window, he's in your house but he's not invited. Because the window is not the way to get into the house. Is that true? When a visitor passes through a door, that means that he is welcome. That means he passed legitimately. Are we following tonight? Right, so I said all that to let us know that in Christ, listen carefully, we have the destiny of the glory that excels. It is the will of God. Listen and pay attention, please. It is the will of God that my life and your life should demonstrate the excellence of the kingdom. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10. Paul again was mentoring the church in Ephesus. And he began to tell how that when you read from verse 3, the point of emphasis is verse 10, just leave verse 10. But from verse 3 he says how that by revelation, this mystery was given to him. Is that true? That in times past, in other ages, it was hidden. But in these last days, he had revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Verse 10 says, to the intent. That means, this is the whole goal behind all of this. To the intent that now, that it be known to principalities and powers by the church. That there be a demonstration of the multidimensional, multifaceted wisdom of God. Romans chapter 8, when you read from verse 18 and 19, the Bible says, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Then verse 19 says, For the earnest expectation of creation awaited the manifestation of the sons of God. One version says, Creation is waiting for God to reveal those who His sons truly are. Apostle John was teaching and he says, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. He says, Now are we the sons of God and it doth not yet appear what we shall be like. So we have been called into a life of excellence. We have been called into a life of glory. Advancement is part of every believer's heritage. Enlargement is part of every believer's heritage. If you do not believe this as true, the grace to walk in it is never released. You have to understand this. The assignment of the anointing is to validate the word of God. That means if there is no sent word, the anointing has no assignment in your life. The anointing has the singular assignment of bringing expression and validity to the word of God. The assignment makes the word to always look and remain true. That's the assignment of the anointing. So if there is no sent word, the anointing is barren. We have been called into the life of grace and excellence. Never allow anybody preach you out of this truth. That in Christ, according to the authority of scripture, that is greater than the opinions of men, that is greater than the sentiments of religion, let God be true and every man be a liar. The word of God is very vocal as to the fact that in Christ we all have a holy calling. Is that true? The Bible says that we are a royal priesthood and holy nation. It calls us a peculiar people. It says we have been called out of darkness into light. To reveal the glory, the excellence of God. So advancement is our heritage in Christ. Enlargement is our heritage in Christ. Biology shows us that wired into man and creation is the instinct and the mandate to multiply and to increase. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, are we still together? The Bible says when God made man, when he got to verse 26, he says, And God said, Let us make man. The word there is the word Eloha. God said, the singular, the Godhead said, Let us make man in our own image and let that man be after our likeness. What does it mean to be after the image of God? The spiritual character, the glory of God. Then the likeness of God means to function like Him. Two hands, one head. Are we, that is the likeness. But the image of God is what Satan was looking for. You see. 
Satan already had the likeness of God, but he wanted the image. So the Bible says that he gave us dominion. Pay attention, please. He gave us dominion when you read from 26 down to 20, 28. He blessed man, Adam, dark earth. When he blessed that man, the woman was still in the man at the time. And he gave them dominion over the birds of the air, the fish of the sea. Now listen, the instruction was be fruitful. Then multiply. Then replenish. Then subdue. And he says to have dominion. So part of the dominion mandate necessitates enlargement. It is disobedience to remain at the same level. Are we together now? Please pay attention. It is, it, is not, it is not an issue of showing that you are moving well. A command was given. And the Bible says, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Faithful to the call, faithful to the command. Are we still together? The instincts to enlarge. So when a woman takes in a seed from her husband, Without any effort on her own part, the seed begins to grow. Is that true? And to occupy the entire space of the womb. As at the time of the arrival, that seed is something that may not even be seen with the natural eye. But then because of that dominion, because of that command, because of that character of God to enlarge, the seed begins to enlarge until after nine months, you now don't have a tiny seed again. You have a full grown baby and you would think that's the end of the enlargement when the baby comes out of another environment the enlargement continues are we together now yes. luke chapter 2 and verse 52 speaking about jesus himself the bible says and jesus increased he enlarged he increased in wisdom in favor the bible declares are we together in stature and then in favor with God and with men? Even Jesus, the word of God, he increased in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and with men. Let's run through a few scriptures to convince us and to rest that case once and for all. That it is God's desire for us to increase. That means it is never God's desire for you to be at the same level where he started with you listen in the parable of the talents matthew 25 just give me there we're not reading it the bible says that he gave on to one three men is that true he gave on to one five talents he gave on to another two talents the last he gave one talent and then the bible says he went and allowed them to do whatever they wanted to do with it the one with five talent did something and expanded he increased he had five more the one with two had two more but the one who had one even though he had only one at least he did not lose that one you think he will be commended for at least still having that one left when the master came back and demanded accountability the one who had five had five more well done thou good and faithful servant Hallelujah. Sorry about that. In one of the synoptic accounts, you would see that the reward given to them was authority over greater kingdoms. Greater territories was the reward that was given to them. And then, the one with one talent, here's what he said. He said, I know you are a hard man. You like to reap where you did not sow. And so I thought instead of doing this, I, I buried it in the earth. And he looked at him and he called him number one wicked number two unprofitable that means god never expects anything to remain the way he started it if god gave you a mind he should not see you at that same level god is a god of motion god is a god that moves he does not remain at the same level the only thing that is consistent is his character but as far as the vastness of his glory is it is ever increasing Worthy, worthy is the Lamb 
Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb that was slain. By the time John would see the same Jesus who mentored him on earth in the book of Revelation, it was another level of glory. It was not the same glory he saw. John saw him in the Isle of Patmos. And he said, you mean this is the man that I walk with? God should never find you at the same level. Spiritually, financially, in your influence. It should never be that you should be at the same level. Listen. As a man of God, the grace that was upon you when you started should not be the same level of grace that grace and peace can be multiplied. Your wisdom should not be at the same level. Your influence should not be at the same level. The access to resources that you have should not be at the same level. Your comprehension of spiritual truth should not be at the same level. Let's look at the following scriptures very quickly. Am I wasting your time? Psalm 115 verse 4. Please write it a little Bible study now. Media, please help us as much as you can. Psalm 115 and verse 14. 115 and verse 14. I may not be able to turn to them, but if we can have them projected. Thank you. God bless you. Read it with me, please. We'll be reading it very quickly. Ready? One, two, read. It says, The Lord shall increase you. It never said more, just once. The Lord shall increase you more and more. And your faith keeps adding more and more and more and more and more. The Lord shall increase you. Someone prophesy. Say, the Lord, the Lord shall increase me more and more. Forget about what your bank account is saying. Forget about what your village is saying. Just prophesy. The Lord shall increase me more and more. Please sit down. Isaiah chapter 54, please, from verse 1 to 3, very quickly. Please write it down. These are scriptures. You see, the basis of our confidence in the faith walk is not just the speakings of a man of God, but the scripture. Don't just believe because you like and trust who is speaking. You must believe because it is truth from the word of God. This is why I am running through scripture. I already believe what I am telling you. But I need you to believe it. Psalm 54, from verse 1 to 3. 1 to read, Yola. Sing, O barren. Oh dear. Just, just start from verse 2 since you are already there, please. Let's go to verse 2. We are reading just 2 and 3. Psalm, you got it right. Huh? Isaiah Did I miss something? Isaiah 54, forgive me Isaiah 54, you were correct Thank you, alright Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear uh -huh. Break forth into singing And cry aloud Thou that did not travail with child Why? For more are the children of the desolate Than the children of the married wife Said the Lord Verse 2, read if you are a Christian Uh huh Spare not, lengthen thy cords, and strength may verse 3 be a prophecy for you. Go ahead and read. It said, For thou shalt break forth on the right and on the left. Job chapter 8, verse 7. Next verse. Job chapter 8 verse 7 I'm showing you from the authority of scripture That it is in every believer's destiny Not the destiny of men of God Not the destiny of special people from wealthy families From any village From any city Don't let nobody bully you through their orientation The moment you are in Christ You sustain the same potential If you believe to enlarge And hear me for those of you who may think 
I'm coming from a background where I can't speak English. I didn't have the privilege to go to school. I bring you words of comfort. There is a God in heaven. And if you can place your faith, He will pick you from right from that village, that place where you are. Job chapter 8 and verse 7. Job 8 and verse 7. Go ahead and prophesy as you read. Ready? One to read. It says, Though thy beginning was small, yet thy latter end. Hallelujah. I know I went to a school where we sat on the ground to read. But don't be too quick to laugh at me. God is doing something. I know I came from a family where we go to the farm before we go to school. Though my beginning be small, I may not look like it, but the Spirit of grace sustains the ability to enlarge you. That one day when you tell people, this is where I came from, they will say, we can't believe this. That's why I sang that song. It is because the Lamb has prevailed. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Mighty, mighty is the Lamb. Mighty, mighty is the Lamb. Mighty, mighty is the Lamb. Listen, I may not have any evidence around my life right now. My parents may be in a room where you can see the sky from inside that room. You may not even have any privilege as far as a sociological advantage is concerned. But right where you are, your first assignment is to believe that on account of what Jesus has done, there is an opportunity given to all men pay attention given to all men regardless your age regardless your gender there is no thing like too late abraham started at 75. never say it is too late we're talking about the god of heaven are you following my discussion now so please sit now that you know and you believe that in Christ listen do you know why we respect scripture so much because God is bound to his word not to your needs he is bound to his word not to your emotions he is touched with the feelings of your infirmity but he only responds in honor to his word so if the basis of your activity in the scripture is just or in the faith life is just emotions you may not get anything from god now when the devil tries to ask you what makes you think tomorrow you are going to be blessing the world from this village you will sing this song for him it is because that lamb has prevailed. He is worthy to open the book. And when the book is open, crying and weeping stops. He says, weep not for the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed. Are we still together? So it is our destiny in Christ. I'm being as simple as possible so that everybody can understand. Let me give us one last scripture. Genesis chapter 17. This was a promise that was made to Abraham and verse 6. Genesis chapter 17 and verse 6. Remember that every promise that was made to Abraham was made to Abraham and his seed, which was Jesus, not Isaac, his seed. And then the Bible says in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 29, it says, If ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So we know for a shorty that everything we see God tell Abraham by the covenant of being grafted into Christ, that truth is applicable to us. This is doctrine. Are we together now? Genesis 17 and verse 6. Read it as though God were speaking to you. If you have it projected. Genesis 17 and 6. Genesis chapter 17 and verse 6. Do I turn there or do we have to wait? Okay, fine. Read with me, please. One, two, read. Now, 
keep that scripture there hold on where you see thee i want you to change it and put your name do you believe that one to read and i will make joshua selman exceeding fruitful I really want you to believe everything I have been saying. Can I tell you this? God does not lie. Allah by our career. If He speaks, it is because He sustains the ability to make it happen. There are two people who will shout now under the anointing please bring them out we'll continue but i just saw a light i just saw the power of god there are two people god is bringing mighty deliverance i just saw that light please bring them out right now as i'm speaking the mighty power of god is coming on two people Bring them out. hearing a name Jonah who is that please Jonah we are going to sit down to continue scripture but let's just honor what God is doing I'm hearing a name Jonah who is, who is that I don't know if he's a gentleman or Jonah I just want to speak to that person right now Jonah is there someone like that Jonah Listen, God does not play games and entertain people. No. Every time you see, remember you prayed and fasted and prepared. The power of God is coming on two people outside. Among these people at the overflow. I just saw a strong anointing coming on two people. This is a program that this territory will never recover from. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. Now in the name of Jesus, everything that represents witchcraft over this family, I stand by the God of heaven and I command it, let it be destroyed now. Let it be destroyed now. Here at the upper room cathedral, we take authority over everything that has kept these destinies and these families down. Now, let them go. In the name of Jesus. One of these, I don't know, I'm seeing light, just the ministry of angels, where these are mothers are. I'm seeing the power of God come on one of them. I don't know why, but I'm seeing there's something God is taking out right now. This is what I'm seeing. Help them, please. I stretch my hands right now in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Just this row. This is what I'm seeing. I decree and I declare by the power that... In the name of Jesus Christ, everything that is not of God, I curse it right now. I curse it right now. In the name of Jesus Christ.
Hold the gentleman. Hallelujah. Okay. It's the Lord. Hallelujah. There's a gentleman who is going to start running out now. Just hold the person and bring the person out. Whether you are an usher or not. This is a ministry of signs and wonders. So, it's, it's nothing unscriptural. We love Jesus Christ. The power of God is coming on a gentleman. Saying, please do not miss any session of this. Especially tomorrow night. Um, I trust that God will grant grace. There are some of you who came here with hunger to receive hunger to receive an impartation for your ministries help that lady don't leave them standing help her please so that they don't fall ushers just make sure you are around them don't leave them standing help them so you yourself don't fall victor you may need to help them eh? just guide them on what to do i'm seeing chains and i'm seeing the number seven there are seven people under the sound of my voice. I'm seeing chains around your hand. Right now we'll continue, but the power of God is coming on all seven of them. Please bring them out here right now. In the name that is above all names. I come by the rod of the higher priesthood. Here at Yola, in the name of Jesus, every devil that has held anyone's destiny down, let them go now. Help them please. Let them go now. Please, whether you are an usher or not, just help anyone under the anointing there. Please bring them out. I decree and declare deliverance. Please open your mouth and begin to pray in one minute. Decree and declare. This is my night of encounter in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Adamawa, a revival comes to your territory. In the name of Jesus, a revival comes to your territory. There is no planting and no skimming of darkness that will stand your way this night. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy. Hallelujah. Hold on, please. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you a pastor? This man on white. Hold on. You are a pastor. You have a church? Ah. Please don't see this as a distraction. Help us. Very soon they will be back to their seat. You organized a meeting with hunger and you asked the Lord to come and visit your territory. This is why he has come. Father, in the name of Jesus, every power that is not of the Christ, we command in the name of Jesus, they leave these families now. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Here at Upper Room Cathedral, in the name of Jesus, we bring liberty to these families. You are a pastor. From where? Oasis of love. Oasis of love. Can I pray for you? Because I'm seeing that God is... Stand up. I'm seeing God placing a teaching grace in a strong dimension. A teaching grace. I stretch my hands. May that power come upon you. You will never be the same. Take that fire now. 
in the name of Jesus Christ you will never be the same in the name of Jesus Christ now I decree and declare every family here represented that has been held by any siege of darkness be delivered now be delivered now be delivered now be delivered now and every blessing that has been stolen from every family their joy their peace we command a sevenfold restoration now Let these families never be the same, O oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ. We establish your victory. We declare that liberty is yours in Christ. Let it be so now. Let it be so forever. In Jesus' name I pray. Please be seated if you can. Those that are fine, you can take them back to their seats. Don't lose touch of what we are teaching. We are still teaching. Every time the word of God comes, His power is also there to heal, to deliver, and to bless. Help them, please. Just help them. Listen, let me explain something. Some of you, I know that it's nothing new in the body of Christ to see the manifestations of the Spirit like this. But I want you to know that when God moves like this, um, here and there I know that there have been abuses of grace and there's been misuse of things here and there. But please, don't you confuse what is happening. There are people genuinely called of God who have paid their price with God in the Spirit. Are we together now? I need to say this so that you understand that... So that the next time you are praying and you are saying, God, come and visit our land. He really answers prayers. But you must be ready to receive the answer he is bringing. You will be amazed to hear the testimonies from these lives. Doors that have been closed, open. Age-long captivities, just like that. Who is like him? Lion and the lamb. Seated on the throne, mountains bow down, and every ocean roar to the Lord of Lords. We will praise Adonai from the rising of the sun to the end of every day. Praise. Adonai All the nations of the earth All the angels and the saints Sing praise As many of them who can return Just let them be But please be patient We are not wasting our time These people are not just making noise here God is helping them We declare your liberty For you you don't have to bring everyone who is under the anointing. Just help them, except I ask you to do so. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your families are restored. Your families are delivered. In the name of Jesus Christ. Alright, please sit down. Let's see if we can continue. Don't worry, they'll be fine. If you have a space to sit, sit. So we're discussing the subject of enlargement that it is possible for an individual to experience increase on all sides that means your spiritual fire when we talk of enlargement we are not just talking of physical enlargement when you grow and expand and increase spiritually when you grow and expand and increase intellectually when you grow and expand when your fire for God when the anointing and the engracing of the spirit upon your life 
steps into new horizons that is also enlargement are we together now but i want to point out something very important there for tonight i want you to know and if you can still hear me i want you to write this down there is a price there is a price for increase and for enlargement there is a price for increase and enlargement my assignment tonight is to number one open you up to the possibility of increase all wise but then in addition to that to begin to show you the conditions that must be met for an individual to step into it you want greater levels of fire greater levels of grace greater levels of influence please hear me there is a price and our inability to understand the price component of spiritual things is the reason why we keep claiming them and never walk in the experience of them there is a real price for fire there is a price for kingdom wealth there is a price for increase numerically geometrically there is a price for lifting there is a price are we together price number one let's redeem the time what is the first price if i want to enlarge if i am tired of my current level territorially speaking if i am tired of my current level spiritually if i am tired of my current level ministerially politically economically what is the first price that must be paid to help an individual rise listen god is answering your prayer now because some of you have asked questions lord i am a man of god i love you sincerely but why do i remain at the same level even my church at the same level financially at the same level spiritually at the same level after many years nothing seems to change there is a price to be paid price number one please write it down the first price that must be paid is the price of correct perception the price of correct perception you want enlargement in your life correct perception jeremiah chapter 1 please give us verse 11 and 12 and then we we'll examine a few more scriptures jeremiah chapter 1 11 and 12 my goodness the price of correct or accurate perception jeremiah let's read if you can see it ready read it says moreover the word of the lord came unto me saying jeremiah what seest thou it's a question until then he had proposed to him that right from when you were in your mother's womb i called you i ordained you to be a prophet to the nations and the young boy jeremiah said but i'm a little child he says say not that you are a little child but everything I tell you to say, you will say. And to whoever I send you to go to, go to. And don't be afraid of their faces. And then verse 11, please look up. Don't worry, they will all be fine. Just look up. It says, what seest thou? And Jeremiah replied and said, I see the rod of an almond tree. Next verse. Verse 12. And the Lord says, thou hast well seen. Thou hast seen correctly. In other words, you can see wrongly. There was a time that Jesus healed a blind man and said, what do you see? And the man said, I see men like trees. If Jesus had left that man like that and that man wrote a book, that man would call men trees. Perception. 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 Now keep the scripture there. We're not done. Please keep the scripture there. Jeremiah 1 verse 12. Thou hast well seen. As a result, I will hasten my word to perform what you have seen. Not just what I have said. The performance is over your perception. There cannot be an enlargement 
until there is a miracle of superior perception. Now hear me please, brothers and sisters, servants of the living God, co-laborers, politicians, those in government, listen carefully. Culturally speaking and sociologically speaking, every single one represented here, we come from different families, we come from different cultural backgrounds, and many times because of our sociology, we have embraced perceptions. Listen carefully. We have embraced perceptions that have come either from culture, perceptions that have come from our failures, perceptions that have come from the way we were taught. Hallelujah. Perceptions that have come from our experiences. Look up please. Chances are, if I grew up from a family and a background, where I never saw the hand of God to bring favor. I suffered for everything. I spent 10 years to finish primary school. Another 10 years to finish secondary school. Another 10 years to finish university. Another 10 years to start a job. If you ever hear a man say, God can favor men, you may not believe it. Because your background did not capture that reality. If you have never seen the sick healed in your life, even though you know God heals the sick, chances are you will not believe that God can use you to heal the sick. Perception is important. The first price, if you are tired of where you are, and God wants to now lift you to a higher plane in the spirit, a higher plane in destiny, He does a miracle not to where you are, but He does a miracle to your spirit, he does a miracle to your understanding. The first price, the price of accurate, superior spiritual perception. Let's have the following scriptures down, please. Genesis chapter 13, from verse 14, we are reading down to 17. Media help us. Genesis chapter 13. This was Abraham and Lot. The Bible says that when God called Abraham, from just to give a little background lot went with him and on account of that partnership god began to prosper lot but a time came when the herdsmen of lot and that of abraham began to have a quarrel and they said we be brethren there is no reason for this quarrel choose a choice land and lot made that choice and went to settle near sodom and when abraham was left alone verse 14 now and the lord said to abraham after lot was separated from him Lift up now your eyes. What is the first thing responsible for your advancement? Your eyes, not your feet. The goal is to move forward, but it starts with your eyes. Your perception. He said, and look from the place where thou art, northward and southward and eastward and westward. 15. Read with me, please, if you are a Christian. One, two, read. For all the land which thou seest, I will give unto thee and to thy seed forever. Keep that scripture there. Not the land that is available. It is the one you see that I will give to you. Not the one that is available. All the land which thou seest, I will give unto you and to your seed forever. Next verse please. Verse 16. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then, thy, then shall thy seed also be numbered. 17. It says, now arise. Now that your eyes are seen, your legs can now follow. Your legs will always move in the direction of your eyes. If your eyes sees danger and a mediocre life, sees a ministry that cannot grow, your legs and your hands will move in the direction of that limitation. For God to enlarge Abraham, the first assignment was his eyes. I know you... Um, who is the man of God here? Any? My, no, no, don't worry. This man. You just lay your hands on that lady. Just do what I'm asking you to do. On her shoulder. Just, uh -uh, not her head. Just lay her hands there. Just do what I'm asking you to do.
In the name of Jesus, I speak peace to you. Now. Sir. Help that lady, yeah? Someone, maybe get something and just clean her up. Just... Now, listen carefully. Everyone. So, the first price, watch this, is the price of what? Accurate perception. Accurate perception. Let me tell you this. It is difficult for God to do much with a man of God, with an individual, with a territory that limits him through their perception. The assignment of faith is not just to make you hear what God is saying, but to see what God is saying. Because you can doubt what you hear, but you can never doubt what you see. You can't say I'm wearing white. You can't say I'm wearing red. You can't say I'm wearing a suit. Because you are seeing. If all you are hearing is an audio, you may guess what would this man be wearing. Are we together? Perception. For a long time, God wanted to lift and honor Abraham. But Abraham could not carry the kind of perception that would establish him as the father of all nations. So one time the Lord helped him by bringing him out. He said, try to count the stars. He counted, he could not. He counted, he could not. He counted, he could not. He said, so shall your seed be. Finally, Abraham agreed with God. And the Bible says, God credited unto him for righteousness. Accurate perception. For all the land which thou seest, I will give unto you. Now pay attention. In Numbers chapter 13, we are dealing with the first price. We'll just take that one alone for tonight. Numbers chapter 13. Let's start from verse 1. This was the, a chronicle of what happened to the 12 spies. Remember that spies had been sent to go and spy the land. And I'd like us to examine the power of perception and its implication. They were about to possess a land. And their perception limited them. Ready? It's a long reading. Please be patient. Media will just keep walking together, please. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, verse 2, Send thou men, that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel. Now, watch this. God is saying, I have given it all. But there is something you must do to step into possession of it. So he says, every man choose people to come. Verse 3. We'll see if we can jump a few verses. Moses commanded by the Lord now and all those who are the heads of the children of Israel. Four. And these were their names. Please go to verse 7. Let's just jump their names for the sake of time. And of the tribe of Issachar, Egal, the son of Joseph. Aha, let's continue. I want to show you what happened when they were sent to spy the land. Of the tribe of Ephraim, Oshia or Jehoshua. This would be what we call Joshua, right? And of the tribe of Benjamin, Palti, the son of Raphu. Sorry about the whole chronicle. The tribe of Zebulun, Gadiel, the son of Sodi. Uh -huh. It's a long reading of the tribe of Joseph, Manasseh, 12. Let's go to 13. We'll keep moving until we are done with the numbering. 14. You see how long we are trying to jump this. Now, it says these are the names. Okay, just keep 17. It says these are the names of the men which Moses sent to spy the land. And Moses called Oshia, the son of Nun. He called him Jehoshua. That's where you get the word Joshua. Jehoshua. God our salvation. The one who saves. And Moses sent them to spy the land. And said unto them, Get you up this way southward. And go into the mountain. Eighteen. And see the land. What it is. And the people that dwell therein. Whether they be strong or weak. 
few or many, and what the land is that dwell in, whether it be good or bad, and the cities that be, that they dwell in, whether they be tents or strongholds. And what is the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether there be wood or not, it says, be of good courage and bring the fruit of the land. Now the time was the time of the first tribe grapes. Watch this. So they all went, twelve of them. They searched the land from the wilderness of Zin to Rehob, as men come to Hamath. Next verse. And they ascended by the south and they came to Hebron and all these other places. They came down 23. They came to the brook of Escol and cut down from there a branch with one cluster of grapes. And they bear it between upon two staff. And they brought the pomegranates and of the figs. Next verse. The place was called the brook Escol because of the cluster of grapes which the children of Israel cut down thence. We're reading to go ahead. And they returned. Now follow this now. So Moses sent them, go to the land, spy the land, a comprehensive search, and bring us miracles, bring us testimonies. All right? And the Bible says they returned from searching the land after 40 days. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron the priest, and all the congregation of the children of Israel, unto the wilderness of Paran, to Kadesh, and brought back word unto them, and unto the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land 27 and they told them here's their report now we came unto the land whither thou sentest us and surely it flowed with milk and honey and this is the fruit thereof 28 nevertheless ladies and gentlemen look at the danger just lead them to their seats gradually right you can just lead them quietly to their seat the ushers can do that nevertheless please look up it says the people be strong that dwell in the land of the cities and the city the cities of our world and very great and moreover we saw the children of anak the giants now there the amalekites dwell in the land of the south the hittites the jebusites amorites in the mountains and the canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. Caleb kept quiet and was listening to the rest as they were reporting. And the nation of Israel was becoming threatened and discouraged by the perception they were selling to them. And Caleb shot them down at once. Said, you are not the only one who went there. We all went there. Don't generalize your interpretation. You are not the only Nigerian. We are all Nigerians. You are not the only one who the economy is... The economy can be bad for everybody, but don't generalize experiences. This is what Caleb is saying. Caleb steal the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once. Look at perceptions. Two of them went to the same place. They saw the same challenge. Their interpretations were different. Caleb said, even if you want now, we are ready to go. And possess it, he said, for we are well able to overcome it. But the man that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against these people. Why? For they are stronger than we. 32. And they brought up what kind of report? A poor perception. An unscriptural perception is called an evil report. They brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. I don't know where they saw this one in that journey. And all the people that we saw were men of great stature. Now, I'd like you to read this. Ready? I forbid this from happening to your life. But I pray that you read it now. One to read. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come out of the giants. And we were in our own sight. Stop, stop, stop. We were in whose sight? Not their own sight. We do not know what they are thinking about us. But based on what we think they are thinking, 
we were in our own sight as grasshoppers so we were in their sight they never had the opportunity to talk with the giants and say what do you think about us the same way you look at failure you look at limitations you look at ministry for someone else is seeing ministry as an opportunity to serve the purposes of the kingdom from where you are to the ends of the earth for another person he's seen a burden that leads men to die to bring failure and defeat for someone else he's seen a great life even in the midst of adversity that when men say there is a casting down for you you shall say there is a lifting up but for someone you can sit down and allow life beat you left right center and say how can they allah sharia The first key, if you want to rise to be mighty and to enlarge spiritually, financially, territorially, ministerially, listen carefully, is the price of accurate, correct perception. When we see wrong, we believe wrong. And we act wrong listen to me there are many of you here who the call of God is upon your life but based on your background you have been told you can't serve the Lord leave all the people who came from rich families who have traveled to the US and come back you who has come from a village somewhere is not for you whereas you go back to bed and you see God telling you I want to do more with you you may look like you're a weak person but there are destinies upon your shoulder and whilst you are preparing do you know let me tell you this respectfully speaking this is a plague in Africa there can be an indigenous individual who has an idea that can transform a territory and everyone will push them and say no we don't think this is nice someone will come from somewhere who was thrown from his own territory because of incompetence but just because he carries a persona that is foreign we will rush and and attend to them at the detriment of the creativity within the territory there are brilliant minds in africa there are mighty men and women of god in nigeria there are mighty industrialists in nigeria there are women of value and power in nigeria there are mothers with excellence and power but our perception is what has stopped us from increasing there are some of you god has spoken to you years ago that this ministry is going to expand by land and at the time god spoke to you you look at the size of the ministry only 60 people and you said land for what and had you obeyed god and bought land at that time right now you will not be biting your finger in shame there are some of you here god spoke to you i want to send you abroad try this scholarship exam and you laughed at yourself ah it's not for people like us i am grateful with the little god has given me can i tell you this there is a thin line between contentment and mediocrity it is good to be contented but mediocrity is a dangerous programming and i say it respectfully speaking not to insult but you see we need the grace of god to help us to believe in ourselves and sustain the grace to expand our perceptions it is true i speak to you as though i'm speaking to family you must believe god to be able to take you from where you are man of god god can pick you right from this city there is a grace god can place upon your life that will bring people all over the world to come it doesn't if you don't have to just go there there is a grace for where the carcasses are the bible says there the eagles will but if you don't believe you can sit down there and continue to compare yourself with yourself and the bible says that is not wisdom I came to challenge you tonight if it is enlargement that you desire please hear me there is more that god can do in your life do you know many years ago bishop sir i was in one room one room 
it was from that one room I was having visions of the globe. It was from that one room I was having visions of nations coming. I would get up and from that one room I would write what I saw. And I believed God. That one day I will stand before presidents. One day I will stand before kings. When God said it, I believed it. How it will happen, I did not know. But one thing I know is worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. That one day I will be taking the gospel to the nations. That I will speak the gospel before kings and before nobles. How it will happen, I did not know. But I believed him. Brothers and sisters, I bring you words of faith and words of encouragement. Some of you are standing here. You remind me of the Reinhard Bonke crusade many years ago. I was one of the people in the crowds in that crusade. I came there with hunger. I was already a man of God. But there was a dimension I did not see in my life and my ministry. And I came with hunger to come and receive. And that great veteran of the gospel of blessed memory, while he stood there, I was part of the crowd. For six hours, I stood with hunger. Listen to me. Ladies and gentlemen, let me speak to you. You can just help her. You can, if you can take her back to her seat and she does not disturb, no problem. Just don't malhandle her. Just take her gradually. These are just manifestations of the Spirit. Now, pay attention, please. Listen. Listen. I remember in that crusade, it was on that crusade ground. That was the first manifestation of the Holy Spirit that I saw. He finished preaching just like this. Other people came for entertainment. Other people came to do man of God on the crusade ground. I came with hunger because I was tired of that current level. I had seen a dimension of the workings of the Spirit in his life and I desired with all my heart. And when he finished preaching, he was going to take water so that he would minister the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And something supernatural happened. My eyes were opened and I saw a bird without exaggeration. That bird would be as big as this auditorium. I just saw it moving. I thought everyone was seeing it. But I was the only one who was seeing. Hovering round. I said, what is this? By the time I was done from that vision, I had turned to back the stage. I didn't even know when I had turned. And the Holy Spirit took me to Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. And the Spirit hovered round the face of the waters. And He told me the union between the spoken word and the movement of the Spirit is what bends the miraculous. I saw it by revelation. Am I wasting your time tonight? We are going to pray. Perception. Right from that place I believed him. And gradually, gradually the Lord began to show mercy. And today all I can say is glory be to the name of the Lord. The doer of every good thing. The Lord sent me here to tell you, and it is true, that where you have encompassed this mountain, and this level long enough there are men of god here the lord has brought me here to push you stop giving excuses it's time to do ministry that brings glory to the name of the lord stop giving excuses for lack of miracles i'm not called into the miraculous it's a lie there's no such thing as that it's because you have not enlarged your heart to contact the genuine grace that provides it Oh, it's because I'm not domiciled. I'm not a resident of Adamawa State. That's why ministry is not growing. It's not true. It's not true. Heal all your excuses. And say, Lord, I'm tired of giving excuses. I open up my spirit. Why is my prayer life up today and down tomorrow? Why is my word life up today and down tomorrow? Why is there no influence multiplied in my life? Oh, Adamawa people are greedy. They will not give me money. It's not true. Another person will come into the city and they are following him with seeds. Kill every excuse. You see, when you take responsibility, God is ready to show you mercy. I knew that there had to be more to ministry. I made up my mind that I did not want to do ministry that was around jealousy and competition. Because that's what happens when you don't have results. 
when you don't have results you don't have to be a bad person you will continue to go through the circle of jealousy petty gossip and all of these things that's always what happens when you don't have results when you are poor and you see people blessed you will insult them when you fail and you see people succeed you will find a way of saying that they cut corners when God does not seem to bring that kind of honor that you deserve and you see people excelling, let me tell you this, the cure for all of these things is to trust God to obtain grace, to expand. Joseph only forgave his brothers because he had become king. If they met him in the cave, he would not forgive them. There is some, do you know one of the reasons why many of us are still holding bitterness? It's because we don't yet have results. There is a way God will so lift you, it becomes unnecessary to discuss some things again. I believe that there are worship ministers in Adamawa State that must rise to become global voices. I believe that there are men and women of God here in this auditorium that must rise, not for self-glorification, but for the purpose of the lifting of the name of Jesus. I believe that there are businessmen here. A few of your businessmen and politicians have shown you the possibilities that happen when people can dare to believe themselves. Everybody has the destiny of increase and influence. If you have not tapped into it, you are shortchanging the potential of that which Christ has done in your life. But the first price is perception. There are some of you, as a result of this conference, you need to go back this night and carry the notebook where you and the Holy Ghost were writing many things years ago. Remember that old notebook. Go and take it back again and check what God wrote that you have stopped believing now you wrote in that notebook that there are people you will be sharing the stage with God revealed to you that a day will come you will be lifting people from wheelchairs but now when you started ministry and it looked hard you just shelved it away and said no I don't think that is possible I bring you a word of life there are many women today are called into the ministry of prophetic warfare and intercession Right from the days of your youth, you keep having visions and having prophetic insights. You sleep, you have dreams, they come to pass exactly the way you saw. What do you think was moving you? There is a grace, but you have refused to give it expression. Perception. Let me encourage the youth in this place and within this territory i love you with all my heart and let me tell you let nobody talk you down to make you believe that you cannot from this state bring up something that blesses the nations can i tell you this my life is proof that god can pick you from anywhere and exalt you and place you there and any spirit that has been lying to you that you cannot move past this level. I cast that spirit from your life now. Enlarge your tent. There is no enlargement except there is space. One last scripture and we'll wrap up for today. Apologize for the time. Second Kings chapter 6. You are my hiding place. Second Kings chapter. F uh, let's look at 4. We'll look at 6 tomorrow. Second Kings chapter 4. This was the story of the wife of the sons of the prophet. The first seven verses, please. Just take them gently if they can move to their seat. 2 Kings 4 verse 1. 2 Kings 4 verse 1. 2 Kings 4 verse 1. Now there cried, please look up. There cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet unto Elisha. Follow this carefully. It says, thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor... The creditor is come, sorry about that, I'll just quote it, that the creditor is come to take two of the sons as collateral. Listen carefully. 
Do you know while this woman was crying in her house, the oil to set her free was in that house. But the only problem with the oil that was that it was put in a small container. The problem was not the oil. The problem was the container carrying it. Every time the woman kept saying, I don't have anything. Oh God, bless me. Heaven was saying, Madam, you have all it takes to pay your debt and live a comfortable life. But she said, where is it? And based on her perception, she saw a little cruise of oil and felt, no, this does not carry anything. The Bible says, verse 2. Please give us verse 2. Let's hurry up. Verse 2. Elisha said unto her, what should I do to you? He says, tell me, what do you have in Adamawa state? What do you have in Yola? Pastors, what do you have in your church? And here's what the woman said. And this is the response of many, many people. Thine handmaid had not anything save a pot of oil. And the prophet said, that's it. God will never leave you without a witness. The factor that leads to your lifting and your glory has always been there. But you have put it in a small capacity. Great oil but carried in a small mindset. So you cannot go past this limitation. Here was the advice of the, of the prophet. He said, go and borrow the vessels. You don't have to borrow oil. But you need to borrow vessels. Of all thy neighbors... Even empty vessels, borrow not a few. For, we are reading to verse 7. When thou art come in, shut the door upon thee and thy sons, and pour out into all the vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. Do you know what he was telling her? He said, look, man of God, it is true that the visions you have seen, they are great. But those visions are being kept in a small perception. They are kept in a small mindset. Your perception is small. He's saying, go and exchange it. Expand your capacity. Buy books. Buy the truth. Interact with minds that God has helped and shown mercy. Now watch what happened. She went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons and brought the vessels and she poured out. Verse 6. The miracle began to happen. And it came to pass, as she began to pour the oil into bigger vessels, what happened? The oil started increasing. There is a relationship between space and increase. Space and increase. If a woman wants her child to keep growing, she has to bring him out of that space. Because that space is exhausted. When he comes out of a bigger space, what happens? He begins to grow. Are we together now? The Bible says, she said, bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, there is not a vessel more. And the oil respected the fact that her capacity had come to its limit. If there was still greater vessels, the oil will continue to flow again. And the instruction came from verse 7. When you have now expanded your capacity, it says, go and sell the oil. Did you ever read in the gospel when Jesus was talking about the parable of the ten virgins, the ones whose oil finished? He said, go to them that sell. These are the people that sell. That's how they got the oil to sell. Are you seeing now? The people who he recommended, he said, there are people who sell this oil for your lamp. I tell you where they got the oil. They got it as they were expanding their capacity. They had more to pay their debt and they now had it to sell. When you have the oil to sell, the nations will come to you. They will not come and meet nothing. Listen to me. The nations will not come to you just because you are called of God. The nations will come to you because you have enlarged spiritually. Can God put you in the middle of a stadium to minister to people and be sure that you will not be disappointed? Have you enlarged to that degree? Have you enlarged to carry grace to that degree? Can God keep you before kings today and be sure that you will be able to represent the purposes of the kingdom with accuracy and with intention? Ladies and gentlemen, 
God does not have a problem bringing enlargement. But there is a price. And the first price tonight is perception. Go back home and carry your Bible. And begin to read about your future. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1. It shall come to pass. If thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord. To do and observe all that I command you this day. It says that thou shalt be exalted above all the nations of the earth. And these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. Right from that one room. I believe. I believe. It shall come to pass. That God will set you above nations and kingdoms. I believe. Many years ago. When God called his servant the bishop. During the days and the times of the patriarch now gone. Archbishop Benson Idahosa, he believed. We are gathered today in honor of a man who believed God. Can I tell you this? The signs don't go before you. These signs only follow them that believe. <laughs> Hear me. Hear me. Let me explain to you. Don't assume you understood what I said. If what is following you is wrong, don't drive what is following you. Drive what is attracting what is following you. Hear me. These signs, if failure and limitation and retrogression and shame and reproach is following you, they are not following you. They are following your perception. Those signs are coming in honor to and of your perception. You don't drive them by saying, go away, shame, go away. Uh -uh. You drive them by introducing light. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 Amplified says Arise from the depression and the prostration That circumstances have kept you Rise to a new light We are going to pray It's time To still be in that one room But let your mind Dream with the spirit of God And go to the nations It's time to be in Adam our state here and yet, allow that prophetic ministry to rise beyond this city. It's time to allow yourself. Many of you here are brilliant people by any standard. But you have allowed status quo to keep you. I made up my mind that as far as loving Jesus, representing Him, and serving His purposes are concerned, I will continue to expand and enlarge. Until I sustain the capacity that will help the nation see Jesus. The global harvest is a mandate that we must not fail in. Discipling nations and helping them experience the love and the grace and the power of Jesus. Is a mandate that we must not fail. I vowed and I made a covenant with God as a man of God. That I will never come into any city and any meeting. And watch the sick go back sick. The oppressed go back oppressed. And all I do is waste people's time and talk to them. No, no, no. But making mere confessions like that and stopping at that will only end you in shame and reproach. There is a responsibility dimension to enlargement. Don't just say, God enlarge me. He wants to. But are you willing to pay the price? The mother of James and John came and met Jesus and said, can you grant that when you are done with Caesar and all these people, grant that my son sit at your left and your right? And here's what Jesus said. The space is available, but can you drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism? Apostle, I want the anointing like Reinhard Bonke and Benny Hill. That space is still vacant in the realm of the spirit, but can you pay the price to expand to that level? Apostle, I want to walk in the prophetic. I want to become a leading voice that serves the purposes of God within Yola and the Northeast and this country. Can I tell you the truth? It is true that there is an election of grace. But every one of us has an opportunity to rise to become the best and the greatest as God desires. The challenge is that many of us are not willing to pay the price. Someone by this teaching tonight... You need to get back to that price. If you, when others are sleeping, you carry your Bible, go to a bookstore. Minimize social media distractions. Go in there to sit down and waste time gisting and sit down. I'm on my way going somewhere. 
listen to me my dear people some of you need to sit down and get materials all those three four five phones you have you don't need them throw away all those things and have one or at least two is enough sit down when other people are roaming around and loitering around as though they do not know where they are going sit down and burn the candles don't pity yourself you will pamper yourself to failure and mediocrity there is nobody preparing for the olympic who wants to prepare at the point of comfort the bible says that he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully can i tell you this till today you go back to my laptop you go back to my phones there are videos i'm watching there are books i'm reading even though i came to this city i came for a conference like this and god has honored me to be the speaker as i return back now don't think i'm going to be sitting and crossing my leg and browsing i also have spiritual projects that i'm on now as far because compared to where god is taking me i'm just one step out of the cave i've not started at all destroy arrival mentality i've arrived based on what standard those you call men of God today in Bible days, they were ushers. Make up your mind until your presence can drive every devil out of Yola without bragging and without boasting. Make up your mind as a man of God that if you ever stand and pronounce to someone and say, God bless you from, from your altar, the fire that emanates from it when it rests upon that person, he must return with testimonies. Listen, nobody will clap for you twice for the same realm and the same level. If people clap for you once, that's okay for that realm. If you remain at that level, nobody will ever celebrate the investment of God's grace upon your life. God has called you to be a prophet. And it is true that you have the prophetic, but your capacity is small. Out of ten prophecies, only one is accurate. Discipline yourself and go back to the secret place. Don't move around, prophet anything. Please don't feel insulted. I didn't come to insult you. We are co-laborers, but I'm only challenging you. Some of you here are worship ministers. Don't go around celebrating mediocrity. Sit down and gauge yourself by a global reference. Thank God for the little invitations here, but Lord, let songs come from heaven. I obtain grace. Refuse to be a local champion. Refuse to compare yourself with people within your environment and say, at least I am better. No. You are not called to that life of competition. Your destiny is to the nations. Price number one, as we pray, the price of perception. What is our prayer tonight? Lord, I'm tired. I don't know what has programmed a life of mediocrity in me. I don't know what has let me think that as a mother and as a woman, I cannot be used by God. I do not know what has made me think that I will die without building my own house. There are many of us here, the only thing increasing in our life is our age. Nothing else is growing. Nothing else is increasing. The only thing growing in your life is your age. There's room for expansion. I was so honored when Bishop was graciously sharing with me earlier on about some projects that are ongoing. I was so touched and I said, can you imagine at this level there is still that grace. God has granted me by the privilege of His grace to interact and relate with the fathers of faith in this nation. And I say it with every sense of humility. There is none of them today as I speak that does not have a major destiny project ongoing first in their lives and across the ministry it's in you lord it's in you lord we know there's more that's found in you it's in you lord it's in you lord we know there's more that's found in you. One of the blessings of walking with the Holy Spirit is the capacity to develop your discernment. Discernment is the spiritual quality of perception. It's the ability to perceive 
not just the origin of things the spirit that engineers certain things but also a perception of thoughts and a perception of intentions with uh, discernment works almost like mind reading you are able to pick signals are we together now that's why i led us to read that scripture it says the sons of issachar had an understanding a perception of the times one of the secrets listen one of the secrets to a life of victory is the ability to move as the spirit is moving in the revelation of ezekiel and daniel had the same revelation he says how that the cherubs everywhere the spirit moved they also moved the secret to a life of victory the secret to a life of triumph is to do what god is doing is to go where god is going because anywhere god is that is where his life his power his victory his glory is concentrated if god is going to the left and you are headed right you are in trouble if god is going right and you're headed left you're in trouble it's important that's why we pray and that's why we create an atmosphere of worship because among other things we want to build discernment the capacity to understand the speakings of the spirit for every season hallelujah and um, god has been helping us we've been bringing teachings already that i believe are very very applicable to our lives and in line with the word that god has given us this year tonight i want to share on something powerful this message is very personal to me especially in this season because i have seen the let me borrow from the words of god's servant bishop david Oyedipo. i have seen the capacity for sweatless triumph on the strength of what i'm about to share with you but then i have seen how difficult the life of a man can be if you do not have this let me digress for a minute or two to reiterate something that i believe has been an anthem in this place it's important to know what spiritual growth is because that's why we are gathered here spiritual growth first and foremost is the ability to conform experientially to the image of the christ conformity conformity to the image of the christ the second character of spiritual growth is the ability to sustain an ability where you accurately comprehend the mysteries and the secrets of the kingdom so I can know whether or not you are growing spiritually by seeing to what degree you are conforming to the image of the Christ one and then the second point is I want to see how you are living your life I want to see how you interplay spiritual laws like a chef in a kitchen with raw ingredients but can give you an assurance to be patient for two hours and within those times he or she is working out something mixing the ingredients with intelligence and knowledge and after two hours sometimes what he or she is mixing will even change color they they know what to do and then they bring out a beautiful combination and it blesses everyone you are not a blessing if you do not understand the secrets of the kingdom you cannot be a blessing men rise in this kingdom through secrets we rise in this kingdom through secrets our business in this kingdom is the ability to trade secrets the secrets of the kingdom no matter how you brag about being spiritual if you do not know how to handle the secrets of the kingdom to produce the results that are required you are wasting your time and you will eventually get frustrated no matter how confident you sound now and what a joy to have a ministry and a platform by his grace that can afford us the opportunity to 
rise to a point where we understand the secrets of the kingdom this is what we teach every time and tonight you're about to learn one i pray that you not only add it to the list of the mysteries you may have had and are not using but that you pay attention to it because it may be the one key that is required in this season to bring prophecy to manifestation hallelujah can you pray for one minute and say lord open my eyes open my eyes open my ears amen tonight I'm teaching on what I titled the gift of men the gift of men Ephesians chapter 4 the gift of men I want to share with you and unlock to you a mystery behind strange breakthroughs the mystery or a mystery really not just a mystery but one of the kingdom secrets that controls what I will call a quantum leap in a man's life hallelujah I want to share with you a mystery that is responsible for the sudden explosion in the life and destinies of individuals businesses ministries and all of that please pay attention the gift of men Ephesians chapter 4 your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and I will forever sing your praise your spirit opens to me the treasures of your world. I will forever sing your name. I will sing. I will sing. Of the wonders of your world. I will sing. Out for joy. I will sing of the wonders of your world, and I will forever sing your name. Seven and eight, Ephesians four, seven and eight. Sabala. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore, he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and did what? Gave gifts unto men. Those gifts are not talents. Those gifts are not the gifts of the spirit. Those gifts are people. When he ascended up on high, he gave men to men. There are men called gifts. Are we together? The gift here is not anointing. The gift here is not talent like word of knowledge. No, 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 no. Not at all. Not at all. When you read all through the context of Ephesians 4, you never see the mention of anything anointing or gifts of the spirit. Uh-uh. He gave gifts unto men. Where is your own? Because the Bible says he gave gifts unto men. And he says anyone who has that gift will come into a level, a stature, he calls it. Are we together? He gave gifts unto men. Fast forward all the other verses. He says to the end, because of those gifts, that we come into the fullness of the measure of the expectation, the stature of Christ. Meaning, there is a gift I must receive. There is a dimension of the operation of the Spirit I must receive. 
in men to be able to rise to that level please pay attention everything on earth today happens because of one single entity called man the wars in the world today happen because of man the peace experienced by nation by nations have been brokered by men listen to me the poverty that we experience in africa and other parts of the world have been caused and have been sustained by men the wealth and abundance that have been experienced in our world today have been engineered by men the economic system that our civilization currently runs on was designed and is sustained by men the policies that govern the progress or the slavery of individuals and territories were carefully decided upon and prepared by men the only reason why there are still human beings on earth is because there are still men the reason why there is hatred in the world is not because there are animals is because there are men the only reason why every other thing works you say i'm a real estate mogul no land does not give anybody money people love the land so the land becomes expensive everything revolves around men please pay attention i want to share with you a powerful mystery koinonia is running today not because jesus is lord but because there are men the radio station thrives because at the other end of the broadcast there is a human ear not an animal ear not a monkey or a dog ear a human ear to listen there is an armed robber planning to rob today and his mission looks realistic because of the existence of men how come the entire civilization of mankind run in, yet we never study them we study clothes we study oil we study every other thing but we never pay attention to men let me show you a wise man who did what we should be doing psalms 8 hello him madonna psalms 8 hello him madonna David was called up a man after God's heart. Listen, it was not just Solomon alone that was wise. David was very wise. He said, Oh Lord our God, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Listen. Who has set thy glory above the heavens? Read on please. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast ordained strength because of thy enemies that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. Three when i consider the heavens the work of thy fingers the moon think about it which thou hast ordained for what is man that thou art mindful you took your time to create everything for him you created the sun the moon you put protection you made sure plants produced so god there is what is man what was in your mind when you were designing this entity called man that even you god will not rest why that is all god thinks about in heaven do you know god does not think about his glory i know what he's thinking about now man think about it sister if you are aware a brother has been thinking about you from morning till night i think it's a cause to smile that shows you are valuable what is man that thou art it didn't say brain full mind full your mind is full right what's that song 
He will not suffer my foot to be moved. I carry your presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. Lord, amen. Awesome God. So what is mine? He never say who is man. He's not talking about the personality of man. What strategy did you design that you called man? I know his personality, but Lord, what is the use of this? Could you not replace him with something? Listen, read the Bible. God has replaced many things with many things. But God has been unable to find a replacement for man. To an extent that no matter how bad man was, God will come and say, we will fix it. Even the man himself, after working them, he still preserved others. There must be more in this mystery called man. You know what is in a bank. That's why they protect it. You know what is in the earth. That's why we put NMPC to guard it. But we do not know what is in this entity called man. What is man? I put it in a better way. What is in man that thou art mindful of him? Can't you just waste them away and build another species? Lord, are you, are you so dull? After you created man, did you lose your sense of creativity? Why do you want to so fix him? Why can't you just replace him? Can't you put a mind in chairs? What is man? that thou art mindful of him not the son of man that as glorious as heaven is you are not comfortable so you come to visit him to an extent that you make that man your temple that man your temple your temple it's like Donald Trump coming to live somewhere at the back of this place and he says believe me you cannot get the joy and he said no 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 I mean you have everything you need Let's sing that song again. God, we are, we are, we are flying this night. He will not suffer my foot to be I carry your presence everywhere. Who am I? You will be so to me. Jimmy, Moses had died when Archangel Michael came to carry his body. Lucifer also came wanting the body. The guy had died, they were fighting over the body. What was in the body? Don't just say it's your spirit alone that is important. Listen to me. What is in this body? that Jesus is interested in Satan is interested why do demons look for human bodies what in a body L listen listen what, what happens to them when they are in a body you must understand this I will show you a mystery that will change your life we look for oil and ignore men we protect oil wells and leave men think how foolish we are we put fence around lands but leave men and ignore them and kill them and bomb them and we want to move forward the psalmist said i have already considered the ground i consider the oil fields <clears throat> i consider the sun i consider uh -uh. i i found out your attention is on this entity so god please tell me what is man that you are mindful of him if i have a safe with a million dollars and i'm hiding it if you touch any other thing i won't say anything but if you are coming here there i'll be shifting back that's how it is satan noticed every other thing he touched god didn't bother but the moment he started coming to man his attention batters that man and then jesus himself came and walked upon the earth they asked jesus why did you come he said to die <laughs> what kind of assignment is that went to the cross and the people he was dying for were not even repentant yet he was not angry there is more 
to me and you i will show you something today that will make you never hate any human being i will show you something today that will make you see that your prosperity is in the hands of man what is man the most abundant secret to our blessing moves around us every day yet we we can trade it a thousand times to look for oil we can trade it a thousand times to look for whatever it is we protect things more than men we would rather kill men than kill things if 100,000 people die listen and Nigeria's oil field is protected we think we're still all right listen I want you to think about this for a moment just imagine that everyone at the same time in the world falls into a state of coma except you listen do we have intelligent minds in this place imagine that not death everybody simultaneously 7.2 billion people enter a state of coma right now except you let me tell you what will happen to you i know you will first run to the bank you will find it open by the way you will enter the safe and run to a mall no security no nothing no plane no more terrorists no fear where are the demons they are no longer interested you search for them every dark corner does not make you afraid again so why did it make me afraid man man the only reason why demons have something to do is because man is still alive so brothers and sisters i want to ask you again what is in man don't you think this calls for study this thing changed my life i'm playing with your expectation before i begin to teach you what is man when i consider the work of your hands when you see a man designing something you want to know what he wants to put there when i see you building a house i want to know the kind of thing you want to put there then you finish building a beautiful house lavish money and carry a little gold or a little baby or a dog and put in the house i know that that is a dog plus something maybe that dog you are hiding cocaine in that dog i will tear that dog and find out why are we together now Jesus shed his blood many times men will cry even for themselves to die listen listen have you tried to fix things fix things and it didn't work what do you do you try to fix a gas cooker again and again it doesn't work God doesn't throw it away now it's a mystery I wish I had time I would have shown you something a prophet saw that just like a shepherd comes to rescue a lamb he gave us an analogy in the book of Hosea. I think it was Amos. Amos now. Right? That a, a lion ate a lamb. Ate everything. He only left two legs and one ear. Two legs and one ear. Yet the shepherd fought the lion and recovered the two, ear, the two legs and one ear. When I read that scripture, I said, ah, if you come and you see a lion devouring your sheep, and the intestines have been eaten only one ear and two legs is it worth fighting for and yet the shepherd fought i preached a message years ago with that because for as long as you can have ears to hear the creative word of the lord and two legs to take a step of faith you can get everything back again it's the mystery of restoration the most important part of that sheep the lion did eat it what a foolish lion it ate every other part and left what can bring it back the lion would have eaten the ears and the legs and gone away and you would have finished that animal because if you still can hear and you can take steps of faith then all hope is not lost let's go to our discussion tonight please sit down everything on earth i said happens because of man the demonic oppression happens because of man there are more angelic activities on earth right now than human activities all because of men if God were to open your eyes in the realm of the spirit you will see myriads of angels dispatched 
and sent because of man. Every business succeeds because there is a man to provide that value and there is a man to patronize it. Is that true? Those of you who do businesses on campus, you know that holidays are very bad times for you. You don't like it. Why? Not because the building moves. Are we together now? To an extent, Ejimi, that you can ship a consultant from India, bundle him like a package, and bring him to a hospital just to perform an eight-hour surgery and go back and pay him millions. Yet you think he is worth it. Hallelujah. What is man that thou art mindful of him? I have spent my life studying and learning the mysteries of the kingdom that control the results that we desire. I still am at it and I do it passionately. I'm like a spiritual archaeologist, if you would um, permit me to use that word, because I strongly believe the, the secret of the future is in the past. There is something we have long forgotten about that holds the key to a glorious future. And so I study a lot. And when the Lord began to teach me the mystery of men, um, I just felt it was very important to teach us. Now, when you consider the personalities of men, listen, you are talking about the psychological implication of men. You can have people who we consider to be extroverts, people who we consider to be introverts and etc. That's not what I'm talking about today. I'm not talking about the physiology of men. I'm not talking about the psychology of men. I'm talking about the spirituality. The very spirituality, the spiritual significance of having a gift called a man in your life. Notice every time there is the coming of a man into another person's life, the Bible calls it an advantage. When he created all things, when he made the woman, remember, he said, it is not good. So another body comes into another life. And the Bible says that person's life should not be the same. I, I'm just using marriage as an analogy. He said, he that finds a wife. He never said he that finds oil. He never said he that goes to school has done a good thing. He never said he that, he that if you can find another human being. Then he said there is a friend, another human being that sticks close. He gave gifts to men. The Bible was speaking about the patriarch Abraham. And he said, Abraham set out on his journey as instructed by God. And then Lot went with him. He never said Lot helped him. Lot just followed another man. And Lot's life started changing. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Let me show you the implication of men. The Bible records that there was a man called Laban. Laban. And then Jacob came to the house of Laban. And over a span of about 10 years, Laban's entire life changed. Is that true? The Bible speaks about a prophet called Jonah. On his way to run away from God's instruction, entered a boat where there were other men. And certain strange things started happening. Every time someone died, they started calling for the appearance of a man. And a man appeared. And then something happened. Have you noticed every time men entered an atmosphere, they, they made certain things to happen? Men. Men. When Gehazi was troubled, he went to meet a man. Are men really important? When they were hungry, 5,000 people, they found a loaf, five loaves, two fish from a man and took it to meet a man. Even when the donkey spoke, he spoke to a man. Please, I want you to pay attention because what I'm saying will bless your life forever. That means if I ignore men, 
I am ignoring something more than a personality. I am driving out a realm of reality and possibility from my life. Listen, listen. If I ignore men, in fact, in ancient times, when kings had men, they were called wealthy. Not just because they had an arsenal of people to fight, because sometimes the people were not skilled. But in the multitude of men is a king's honor. The multitude of men is a king's honor. Every religion fights for men. Kings of the earth fight for men. The only reason why they fight for territory is so that it can accommodate more men. Are we together? When a man meets with his wife, they give birth to another man. Why is God interested in another man? When Satan tries to afflict a woman with barrenness, what is he trying to stop? What is he trying to stop? He's not trying to stop joy. No! He's not trying to stop peace. There are people who are happy without children. Why would Satan take the issue of men personal? When Moses was giving birth to... Mm, listen... Moses was giving birth to a decree. Listen. They said they should kill all, not animals. Men. In this case, the masculine uh, gender, but then men. When Jesus was born, the same thing happened again. Kill men. What is in man, oh God, that you are mindful of? What am I missing? The last person I drove away from my life, what did I drive away? I'm about to show you. Why is it that the Bible even says a born again spirit filled man for treating another man in his life called his wife, the heavens will close over him and his prayer will not be answered. I didn't steal, I didn't kill, I only did something to another man that was not good. Yet heaven responds to it. This entity called man, brothers and sisters, has more than just a personality. If all you look at is just two eyes, two legs, and a personality, you will cheat yourself. Listen, listen, listen. Let me tell you certain things about men. Number one, men in themselves are not perfect. Ignore this. Because what I'm about to show you will be stopped when you are when you don't take away the you know the, the the effect of some of these things i'm sharing men are not perfect in themselves you may meet foolish men in your life you may meet all wise men in your life however it still is not in enough reason to just throw them away they may be holding certain things that i'll be revealing to you shortly are we together for some reason, God hid his possibilities in men. He didn't hide it just in buildings. He didn't just hide it in territories. But the consecration of the possibilities of men, he hid it. The uh, possibilities of God, he hid it in men. He made man the highest of his creation. Men are not perfect in themselves. Number two, the attitude and the behavior of men, good or bad, good or bad, listen to me, does not stop your receiving what they carry. The attitude of men, good or bad, does not stop your receiving what they carry. Elijah was an angry man, yet he was used to change the life and the stories of people you have to listen to this let me say the third thing that i'd want to say about men are you ready for this there are certain possibilities in men listen to me that predates even their salvation experience please listen 
predate their salvation experience that can still be received whether they are born again or not you have to understand what i'm telling you now am i just am i saying people should remain unbelievers no but i am saying there are certain things that god has put in men that can be received whether or not those people are born again or not if an old woman causes you whether as a witch or as a human being the fact that she has lived long enough certain possibilities have been open to her to be able to speak over your life are you getting what i'm saying now yeah all through scripture every time children cried god had children every time read your bible every time children cried there was a response from the earth to heaven that's why i say out of the mouths of babes and sucklings thou had ordained are we together your destiny and my destiny are men dependent write this down it's a very serious point the your destiny and my destiny the fulfillment of it is highly man dependent my prosperity is man dependent the quality of the work god has given me the quality of your church your ministry your life is man dependent the quality of your life on earth as a believer and as an inhabitant of the earth is man dependent your success and my success in life are highly or is highly man dependent evil on earth is man dependent the advancement of the kingdom on earth is man dependent the fulfillment of prophecy on earth is man dependent god can speak the bible never told us in the prophecy he said a virgin shall conceive a woman aligned herself with that prophecy otherwise jesus would never have been born he never said mary no a woman chose to play that script it just so happened that the name of that woman is mary it was said he would be buried in a virgin tomb he didn't tell us the owner that was somebody's business that was his property it so happened that the man who fulfilled that prophecy was Joseph of Arimathea. He said how that he would be betrayed, but he never said by a man called Judas. The prophetic word of God, listen, has been hanging over the heads of many people because the men to make it happen are not available. Or they have come and we have driven them away. Please pay attention. Occultism thrives through the availability of men. When the devil wants to destroy a family, there usually will be an envoy, an individual, an entity, whatever it is. Men are more powerful than mediums. You can keep a charm in a house, but the most powerful charm is an aligned human being who has agreed and said, Satan, I donate myself to scatter the life of these families. Are we together? My assignment is tonight is to help us to open our eyes to the mystery of these gifts that God has given us that we throw away from our lives around called men. And watch the unlimited possibilities i call it a quantum leap that your life there is a, a quantum leap is a jump 
not just a movement you move from one phase of possibility to the other because of the presence of a man hallelujah there are four implications of the presence of men in your life and i want you to note this number one the first implication of a man coming into your life especially sent by god is the coming of wisdom ideas and strategies the only entity that is able to convey wisdom ideas and strategies is man every time a man shows up in your life wisdom ideas strategies wisdom so when i drive a man away i did not just drive a personality that's why i said dot not wisdom cry it personifies wisdom because wisdom moves in and through men are we together now the conveyors of strategies and ideas and wisdom are men every time you are ready to move in a, to another dimension god sends a man and if you have the discernment that man can represent the strategy for the next level that man can represent the wisdom for the next level that man can introduce the idea for the next level many pastors many businesses many individuals are grounded because they think men are just black entities in clothes no every time you see a man coming to you in your state of misery begin to rejoice and begin to discern what is this man what is coming to me it's not just a human being with a mouth to speak are we together when you order a product from conga or jumia they have their pack is that true no matter where you buy it, they rewrap it with their own pack and every time you see it sometimes it could be a surprise when you see it you start laughing because you wonder what is inside whether it is big or small you want to see what is inside the next time you see a human being come to you especially sent by god in a prophetic season you must begin to rejoice because that person ignore the personality this is what i'm teaching you when you look at the personalities of men you will drive all your miracles out of your life there are times you have to ignore those personalities and discern i've been fasting three days lord what is the key to the next level then a man comes men are the vehicles that god uses to transport wisdom and strategies wisdom and strategies implication number one pay attention to what i'm teaching you wisdom strategies let me tell you i think shortly before koinonia would start when we we're still meeting that time at the back of chapel in the abu campus here one night the lord led me to do something i just told everyone we're not so many maybe three four hundred or so then and I told everyone please can you write don't write your name just write out whatever suggestion that you think can make this ministry rise to the next level that's your assignment just write it and drop it in the basket brothers and sisters my life changed koinonia entered another a quantum leap when i began to read some of the things that were written i was shocked man bringing with them strategies do you know the answer to your prayer is not far from you you just don't have the eyes to see let me tell you god is not wicked i have learned by experience that every answer is closer than you think it is shrouded in a man the secret to your financial hardship somebody is walking with the answer and he will walk and pass you walk and pass you walk and pass you even be encouraging you while you are crying but because you have not discerned that men are the conveyors of strategies men are the conveyors of ideas men are the conveyors of wisdom i've had people help me solve problems in life and i've been surprised not at the solution they brought 
but that they are the ones who brought it and i started saying i mean so why did i start going around i mean you were here all the while has that happened to you after going around looking for answers talking everything it is your roommate while you are discussing in the night you say have you tried a b c and that's the end of it men convey us solutions disguised in human beings that we push away and never rise to the top every time you pray and you see men coming into your life pay attention there may be men who have annoyed you every day of your life but on that day they are sent on that day they are sent who gave naaman the secret of his health i know we clap for elisha but it was not elisha the bible says there was a little slave girl correct a slave girl meant that she did not even have the regiments, the education and the training yet listen it was her that told naman he said I, I i know i'm a slave but there is a man of god there is a man of god i want you to meet when he met the man and you know doing his big manism she she's the one who came and advised him and said see he didn't ask you to go and bath in another dirty water somewhere and naman washed seven times and the bible says his skin could it be that since 2013 you would have risen but god kept answering your prayer and you kept rejecting the answer god give me strategies and all of a sudden he said please get out this way we're talking serious things here said, i had a little dream i saw you i just wanted to share shut up don't tell me anything i'm not stupid i'm a, i'm spiritual a small girl like you and you threw away your answer the person only humans can dream dogs don't dream forget all that junk you hear from sciences only humans have the faculty and the capacity to dream a dream is a mystery is one of the access points where we receive revelation from the realm of the spirit only men can dream only God knows how many times you have dreamt the answer to someone's prayer yet the person drove you away I'm not talking of false prophecies and, and nonsense where you keep harassing everybody you keep seeing things about everybody's life not your own life I'm talking of quality God inspired solution that has a track record of results that we all appreciate are we together men number two what is the implication of a man in your life endorsements and opportunities men are the conveyors of endorsements and opportunities listen if no man can endorse you in this life you will never rise paul the apostle a man approved endorsed when they produce a drug they say this drug has been endorsed by the nigerian dental society brush with it and your life will never be the same or whatever it is that that is the advert are we together now the endorsement whenever you are in doubt when you see that endorsement listen we trivialize endorsement companies have entered million dollar status overnight because of endorsement people have gotten admission with whatever it is because of endorsement i was talking with one of our people here who had been trusting god i think for a change of faculty or something and um you know the guy was discouraged and then i told him i said he should meet our daddy prof you know just to help him out and he said he i saw him i think it was just last week or so and he was telling me he said everything is settled though he said in his presence they were driving everybody out but immediately he entered and they saw the signature they said come in is it prof come in it's called what many carnal people think it's not spiritual you need endorsement it was john the baptist listen this is a secret many rising ministers don't know somebody who ends the loyalty of the people must speak for you otherwise the gate will not open the gate will not open show me the man speaking for you 
Show me who has authorized. Listen, when a man endorses you, he takes his sacrifice and puts it for you to cross with. Many believers lack endorsement. Many businesses lack endorsement. Many individuals lack endorsement. There are many people who would have gotten jobs if only someone can say this and that and that. By the privilege of God's grace that he has granted me, I have endorsed people with just a statement. A one-minute phone call turned them to millionaires. One-minute phone call. Oh, I know this person. I can vouch for him. Help him. Benny Hinn was at almost at a state of financial bankruptcy one time. They were going to cancel the crusades because he did not have enough money. He needed $10 million in three days. $10 million in three days. An anointed man like Benny Hinn, please pay attention. Benny Hinn was, you know, making a program challenging the partners to come. And, you know, when the accounts department, their back office were looking, nobody was really contributing. And the Holy Spirit told him to go and bring Oral Roberts. He carried Ora Robert and brought him. The old man came and sat on air. And they had only three minutes. Can you imagine? Three minutes to the end of the program. Do you know what Ora Robert said? He said, Benny is in need. Please help him. In less than 24 hours, they raised about $15 million. Everybody say endorsement. Don't joke with what I'm telling you. I'm teaching you a powerful mystery that you will need. Promotion many tongue talkers sit down everywhere because they do not do you know why i'm teaching you this i'm going to tell you the responsibility so that when you see a man that can endorse you no sacrifice to maintain the relationship becomes too much because you understand the implication of that person's reputation to your destiny all this unnecessary anger with everybody because you think you are the god of yourself you will stay poor and broke and you will lose in life endorsement 90% of the ministrations that I have gone to by the grace of God have happened through endorsements. One pastor endorsing this. Someone saying, I came for koinonia. Listen to this message. While they are saying that, I'm probably sleeping or gisting with somebody. I pray for someone tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. The voice, the voice. No, any, listen, not every voice can lift you not every voice can lift you the voice that has been accredited is the voice that can lift you and i pray for you in the name of jesus the son of the living god may that voice speak over your life yeah. hallelujah men imply the presence of endorsements and opportunities pastor alpha called me i think where was it that yesterday i was in abuja and he called me and he said apostle do you know anybody who read civil engineering there is a job right now as we are talking for the person no interview no nothing and all he wanted was who is who is there I mean, so that we can give him the... I said, Kai, I don't know anybody in my mind. Let's come for koinonia. After, maybe the person is here now. As you are hearing, you are saying, praise the Lord. And I help you answer hallelujah because that's it. It's done. Someone's life changed overnight. How many people after service, they were just going out to trek just like that. And somebody gave them a lift. And while discussing, they said, ah, what do you do, young man? He said, sir. No, I'm just moving around. Say, ah, well, how can you be moving around? What are you doing? I'm not doing anything. Come to my office. Take this card. And they thought maybe the office looks like just a small fish pond and another building. And they enter the office and they say, sorry, this person. And it keeps getting access until he gets to the man and he says, well, I'm the managing director of ABC. I'm the Nigerian representative of this. Let your life change. Can men change people's lives? <laughs> you, are, you are a big joke. Look, let me tell you. Some things are not demonic oppression. Some things are childishness. Which have been caused by lack of orientation. Sometimes we need sufficient adults to tell us how some things work. You know, all this childishness people carry around. I don't need anybody. You need, oh. You better change that talk quick. 
They don't need any man. Are you joking? Man, what is man that thou art mindful of? Man is a conveyor of endorsement and opportunity. Are we together? That's why we work at making every service a great experience for everyone. Because everyone's experience is automatically an endorsement of what we represent. I have gotten things without paying for them because of endorsements. Brothers and sisters, I'm showing you a simple secret that will change your life forever. The Bible says they know not, neither will they understand. They grow up in darkness and the earth is out of course. People have received partnership in their ministry overnight because of an endorsement. I've had the privilege, I remember one time a particular pastor somewhere, you know, I, I don't raise money, raise funds and all of that. But I went to the church and I, you know, I saw the project they were doing and when I, you know, said everything, I said, by the grace of God, um, I want everybody to sow a seed for this project. Just jokingly, do you know the pastor would call me like two, three weeks later. He said, in all they have met, they have prayed and they have fasted. He was saying, apostle, you are really anointed. I said, no, 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 no. In my mind, it's not just the anointing. It's a track record. Listen, listen. Don't wait till you create the same track record. You, you will, you will, time Time cannot wait for you. Leverage on someone else's sacrifice. The condition that was available to create that track record by another may not be available for you. Are you sharing what I'm saying? I know lecturers, and I say it with all humility, and it doesn't mean you should meet me after the service, but I know lecturers that I have called and said, Sir, please, so 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 has met me that there is a problem in your department and this thing is going to affect him ah my apostle how are you you are even calling me and i say sir please i'm not saying you should uh, do anything but please sir can you look into this issue and the person will just come out and say i passed i graduated it's only me that knows what happened between me and the other person may someone discuss your rising even when you are sleeping that when you are while you are sleeping, someone is saying, look, do you know Sam? I know how he will rise. Come on now. Listen, those who understand this never get stranded. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. There has to be somebody to speak. The voice that speaks for you is the ladder that you will use to climb in the destiny of life. You don't pay attention to what I'm telling you to be at your peril because someone is receiving already the answer. This is how God will bless men in this season. That's why I tell you, when God says it's a year of triumph, believe him. It doesn't take time. It just takes the right voice speaking for you. Hallelujah. I have entered offices today. I have no business entering it because of the endorsement. Endorsement. Who has endorsed you? Man of God, I know you are anointed, but you are sweating all around with posters, flying everywhere and saying, please invite me, give me 30 minutes. I will no, no, no. You don't have to do those gimmicks. Who around has had the credibility and is willing to endorse you? Hallelujah. I will never forget one, one of our ladies when she was preparing to get married. When she went to meet her mother, her mother said, I don't have anything to tell you. I don't even know this guy. Just go and meet apostle. Whatever apostle says. Think of it. Leaving somebody's destiny in my hands. I called the mother. I said, mommy, this guy is a very nice guy. He said, apostle, you are saying that? I said, yes. From that day, there was no ch challenge again. Lord, raise somebody to speak for me. Or raise someone to endorse me. Raise someone to endorse my business. Raise, some, raise someone to endorse my life, my destiny. There has to be somebody to speak for you. Listen, let me show you that Jesus, immediately they gave birth to Jesus. Where did they take him to? The temple. There were two men that endorsed him. Are we together? Immediately they took him. One prophetess called Anna. 
had been there praying and fasting she lifted him and began to speak and then Simeon the prophet began to speak when John was among different people when John saw him John said behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world in the presence of everybody somebody must speak to you in the presence of everybody don't be angry that men are doubting you you have not done anything to bless them why should they not doubt you listen listen let me tell you do you know i say this with all humility there have been people who by the grace of god they started out in ministry and the church was not growing the ministry was grounded and all they needed sometimes they just call and say man of god please so many people listen to your messages in this region you are not here you don't have a branch me i'm here you know i love god and these people never come to my church and then they make arrangements and the day i'm going for those meetings some of those churches don't even have plenty of people but they have multiple overflows those times why because somebody that the people believe in has appeared are you hearing what i'm saying now and then the moment i speak and i say oh this is my uh, uh, a pastor friend a great man a man of integrity i love him with all my heart and immediately it looks like a one second or five seconds talk but the members just say i found my pastor since i can't come to zaria i found the person that can represent him that's why sometimes people foolishly carry my picture for meetings that i'm not coming they don't care whether i say yes or no they just start producing the posters in advance first because they think it's endorsement sometimes it doesn't work but when you have a man truly who can speak for you brothers and sisters i don't see the witch or the wizard that will tie you ladies have married cheaply because someone recommended them brother i've been praying honestly there's this lady i've been looking ah no 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 this lady is a blessing i tell you if it's this lady you are sure of joy and peace in your life whether in plenty or in luck and the brother says I've, I've, my prayer has been answered a few months later they are married but do you know the same way people's destinies have been cut short somebody was about to rise but a bad talk from someone brought him down they were about to give him a job he said don't give this guy a job he worked with me he's toast cement. He, maybe the guy has repented oh do you know paul had to do this for onesimus it's in your bible accept him i know he was once so 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 and so but now just accept him there are people here all those who know you knew your yesterday you have repented today you need a fresh voice that will tell people this is not Saul this is now Paul because the, the, the predicament of being Saul is destroying your breakthrough who today must speak and say no 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 this guy was an armed robber but January he repented are you hearing what I'm saying some of us our past will never let us go they know that you used to be around following every man yes that was your past but now you are born again and jesus is lord of your life yet all the people in your life are people who knew you 1997 so the moment they see a responsible godly man coming they call and say kai um do you know david Dam? i wouldn't have told you it's just because you are my brother this is not a good choice I command every voice that speaks when you are about to rise the moment there is consultation among your destiny helpers to, to lift you there are voices there are pastors today that should not be begging for bread partners wanted to sow into their lives but somebody said I saw his poster with A and B's poster and immediately over 70 ministrations cancelled just because somebody recommended you badly I pray any voice in the name of Jesus that has been speaking evil against your destiny, I silence that voice right now. Shout amen. I silence that voice right now. I silence that voice right now. Please sit down. Sit down. Hallelujah. Cheap victory because a man showed up. Quantum leap because an endorser showed up. 
there are pastors who their destinies have changed overnight a man of god they invited somewhere could not make it and he'll just say please can you go and stand for me that was a meeting that their level of grace and experience should not take them there and they stood there and they did well that day after the meeting there are seven or eight pastors and they say sir please can you come to our, for our meeting can you come for our meeting etc etc there is no meeting brothers and sisters that i will go for that afterward somebody from that meeting will carry the wondrous works of god to another region this is how we have grown as a ministry this is how we have grown even financially the blessing that has come from people are we together now i remember someone one time sewing into the ministry and he said that him i think he's a critical person he hates men of God. Many men of God are fake. They are not serious. But when he listened to my message and his mentor, he, he had his mentor, whoever that person was, listening to my message, he just said, no, we'll be sowing into this ministry. Every month, I tell you, every month, he sows a seed to Koinonia and a seed to my life. Do I know him? I have only communicated with him on text, but endorsement. Don't trivialize what I'm saying. Endorsement. someone you are selling products and you are doing retail whereas a hotel somewhere or whatever needs your product in wholesale but they don't trust you and you will not be given the opportunity to prove your trust you will only be given the opportunity to be trusted based on somebody who already knows you who they believe and someone who says some answer ah, listen if he's a mecca eh, i can tell you he will deliver your chickens every time if it does not deliver it just take it at my risk and all of a sudden they will just sign it and instead of selling one one chicken somebody will come and say it's two five you say we'll give you 700 and all those arguments for hours just to buy one chicken you will start doing wholesale delivery your life has changed Blessings. music artists how many music artists have been suffering as if God didn't call them beautiful voice but no voice to speak for you beautiful voice but no voice to speak they only invite you if everybody they invited is busy then they'll say sorry honestly this program is in three hours I, are you free just come and cover our shape you need a voice say i need a voice, I need a voice. say I need a, I need a man yeah you need the coming of someone in your life to speak for you what opportunities have you been given were you giving it or you looked for it by yourself? Are you seeing the secret to hardship? Where you have to look for everything by yourself. Who has called you to say there is a big opportunity? I cannot handle it. But here you go. Like whoever is going to get this job now. There are times they've invited me for almost every invitation that we honor there are a few others we have to turn down and there are times in my spirit i have felt led to lift certain people and i call those people i say i'm sorry i can't come their heart is paining them and i say no 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 no. but this person cannot call but i know someone i can recommend for you do you believe me ah apostle we believe you we have been praying okay invite us so and so he will bless you case closed i don't want my life to be hard though the bible said the way of the fool is hard wisdom that voice that must speak in my life this has been my prayer i'm sharing with you my secret prayer lord who is the person everybody is buying land they say there is no land it's a lie it's just that all the important people have bought it the day you come they'll say please so so said they should give him land i've shared a testimony here that i heard years ago um and i'll reiterate it very quickly someone who wanted to um, I think get admission in NDA and then the, the required height level the person did not have that required height level and you know military people they are very serious well that's it he returned back to Zaria and then met the Emir and the Emir sent that they should go and tell the commandant they should go and tell the man that the Emir has added the height of the person who is adding your height in this wicked world 
listen this our world is fierce and wicked who is hiding your height when people stand and conspire we must destroy Benga. We must make sure he does not rise. Who is the voice authorized to stand and say, no, not this? I will show you why doors don't open. Because the truth is, I want to admit this with all humility. Many of us are already prepared for the next level. But we don't know the endorsement is the key that we need. The truth is, if it's music artists, God has honored this ministry with great people. If it's intellectuals, there are some of you seated right now. One endorsement. I remember a gentleman who came here um, some time ago, a medical doctor, and he discovered um, something. He, was, he got the patent for um, reproduction of something to reproduce a particular device that can check, I think it can check, your heartbeat and whatever without taking blood from your body very smart guy he came here and i told him i said please go and meet our daddy so that they will connect him with professor knock and like that and i think so on and so on like that like that we've not seen the guy again i want to believe that god has lifted him and i pray that it is so i made up my mind that every voice that must speak into my life whatever price it will take i will pay to secure the endorsement of that voice it's not human worship hallelujah or a robot help benny he's in trouble and all of a sudden somebody's prayer point becomes a gift hallelujah there are men of god who just do you know there are certain stages even ministerially speaking sincerely if god grants you the privilege and the access to stand on that stage as far as ministry is concerned god has helped you there are certain individuals if god has given you the privilege to see god has changed your life endorsements opportunities number three what is the implication of the presence of men in our lives number three what is the implication of the presence of men in our lives access to financial and material resources write it down access to financial and material resources part of the fringe benefits of the coming of a man into your life access to financial and material resources listen listen every one naira every material resource you pray for is currently in the hands of a human being right now praise the lord every land koinonia will ever buy in any nation of the world is currently in the possession of somebody now every transfer that you have been fasting for into your account there is an entity holding it now like this the money for your house is in somebody's account so when you start building a house it will not fall from heaven transfer will be made transfer will be made transfer will be made human beings there are human beings that are generous enough to change your life listen koinonia hear me it is a false understanding to believe everybody is greedy there are absolutely benevolent human beings. Your own price is to win their heart. You can go to bed. Hallelujah. And Lot went with him. He didn't say, and Lot believed what he believed. Lot just walked with him. Hallelujah. Do you know that someone was sharing a testimony somewhere uh, I think it was a lady or so that was sharing a testimony somebody she knows they were walking along a path a road and then the person was quite a senior man and then he met a very big man and he was greeting the man and whilst he greeted the man he gave the man you know the person she was walking with now that stranger rich stranger gave some money and looked at her and said ah young lady he decided to give her something too just like he was not even counting 
she said when she counted it she found that it was 50,000 just because she was working with who think of think of your prayer point disappearing simply because you are working with the wrong person it's the same way you can be working with somebody and you check and find out ah i left my house with 500,000 now i have 12,000 what happened the presence of someone took something away from you access to financial resources your money is in the hands of men please believe me your money is not just in the hands of business you can sell anything you want to sell it's a human being that will have to buy it for you to be paid men can bless you for no reason you must believe this dimension exists that a man can just bless you i've had the privilege of blessing people in a lavish and a generous way for no reason i don't even know some of them hallelujah let me share a testimony that will bless you i share these testimonies to encourage our faith I came back from Abuja this just this evening, just coming here now. And um, yesterday in the night, I decided to take a cab just to go and get something to eat before returning to sleep. And while I got there, my, my elder sister came to give me a surprise visit and we chatted for a while and then, you know, saw her off. Uh, on my way returning, I asked the man, I said, how much is your bill? Probably because the man saw me buying things for my sister and the rest. Ah, you guys say, oh, guy, anything you give me. I said, no, no, please don't tell me all those things. Just, you, you are working. You are working with intelligence. What exactly, how much is your money? And then he mentioned, okay, X amount. He said, oh, guy, you know, I told you I have three children. Because I asked him. I said, oh, you have children. How many children? He said, three. I said, you're a hardworking man. You know, we're talking on the way coming. I said, I like you. You're a diligent man, striving to make sure you provide for your family. And then when he asked me how much, I said, no, but you know that's not the price. So how much is the last price? Then he now told me the truth. He reduced it by some amount. And the Holy Spirit ministered to me. He said I should take whatever was in my pocket, everything, everything that was in my pocket. I don't know how much, but it was, it was nothing less than 25000 He said, take everything and give the man. As soon as I draw from the car, I said, Mr. Man, you do not know me, but go and tell your lovely children that you met a man who decided to bless them make sure you take care i removed everything i dropped it the man was afraid ah this is, i hope this is not blood money and etc 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 i just dropped it and said okay this is where i'm highlighting god bless you until i entered the man was shocked that's the kind of experience that is i didn't know you will answer me this way There are such occurrences on earth. I'm giving you an example. That's somebody's prayer. Now, it may look like it's 20 or 25,000 or whatever. I know it looks small to some of you. But that's the same way it can be 200 and something million. The same way it is that trivial. The same way it was. There are obedient people. Let me tell you. There are people who pack out of their house and give you if God said it. But if they have not had God, you can be dying. They will look at you like this. There are people who the voice of God is their trigger. But to get that voice of God, you have to invoke this and say, Oh God, let let send this man. This man has what it takes to wipe my tears. Financial and material privileges accessed sin, not through intelligence and business acumen, through the understanding that men can do this. I started doing something some time ago. I don't do it again. When I go to get fuel, whoever is before me, no matter how much he wants to fill his tank, I pay for it. I just said I'll do it as a seed. If I go to get fuel and you happen to be before me, whether it's a bucket you are carrying, as long as it's within my capacity, I will sow into it. And I've done that and I watch the joy that it, it, it produces in the life of people. Watch this. One time, I, re I remember, I think it was one of these, was it Salah or something like that? A, a, a man came and I saw him bring out 200 naira. Ah, the wife was at the back of the bike. Just he even just put one leg down and opened that this thing. Just it's as if you just press the thing and take it back. How much with 200 naira fuel? I, I looked at him. I said, please fill the tank for him. The man just turned. Ah, he was greeting me. I said, fill the tank. When he finished, I just waved. I said, Madam, bye bye. You know this and that and that. 
and the man just looked at me. Do you know why I'm doing this? One, because I love God. Two, I am activating the same thing because that's what I want in my own life. I want a situation where one day somebody says, Joshua Selman, I hear you need a house. This I hear you need five acres of land for koinonia. Take. I hear you need joy and peace. I believe it. Oh, if you like, don't believe it. I believe it with all my heart. It's not laziness. It's a provision that is in the kingdom. How many people have gotten free house? They are not in ministry. One day, somebody just said, come and escort me. And they are sharing houses and you just got your own. And left quietly and ran out of the town. Just quietly got a lawyer and said, sign this. It's called prepared blessings prepared blessings prepared blessings that's what God is getting ready to bring for us in this season prepared blessings where you will wake up in the morning with a text and you check the text and all of a sudden a man sends you a text wanting nothing in return I'm not talking of bribe look at this many of our parents some of you know that I'm telling the truth they are brilliant according to their level of sacrifice they should be working at the the highest echelon of the government but today nobody can speak for them there are many people who should be legislators doing very well nobody's speaking for them there are buildings houses that should be completed but there is no help because you start on your own you are receiving 20,000 naira every month but you know one day you can just be passing and somebody will just look and say once in a while we just want to bless people and it just happens to be you dr mike mudok shared it a story one time how that i think it was his dad of blessed memory or mom they performed a surgery and it was about twenty five thousand dollars the people had exhausted all their monies and you know the hospital just called them and said once in a while we like to do good things to people just like charity and it happens to be you i was told about a woman of god in abuja today that went to a particular place and saw um it's like their chapel devastated she brought out eight million cash and said they should rebuild a house for god from scratch up i know a man of god in this country well not a man of god but a rich man the pastor had been shouting we need a tent all of you so we need a tent we need a tent let's beautify the house of god the rich man just kept quiet as if he doesn't know what they are saying one day the guy got up and bought a tent 25 million cash they brought it i'm mentioning these big amounts for a reason i want to stretch your mind because some of you will never believe it if you like say i'm talking about money no problem i know you don't need it but your destiny needs it <laughs> so you better pay attention in the name of jesus connection with men who can help you do you know sometimes all you need in life is just help you don't need advice you don't need suggestion sometimes all you need uh, you don't need help like spiritual help the direct need if you need a watch just sometimes case closed just that watch. sometimes what you need is financial help when Ruth listen when Ruth and Naomi when Naomi stood and was confused did not know what to do and Ruth said I'm not going anywhere with you do you know a time came when she went to the field and she saw them gleaning and Boaz said leave some what did she do just leave some there are there are blessings you will enter into this year that you too you will know that this one no is not me is purely the sovereignty of God and I stand in the name of Jesus Christ I prophesy it upon you as surely as the Lord God of heaven lives may that come to you speedily may that come to you speedily everybody shout prepared blessings say it again prepared blessings it, it, it is true it happens where somebody just steps in and solves your problem directly I share with you a testimony 
those who just got admission in the school of ministry congratulations but you will notice that a supplementary list came out it's not in our culture to release a supplementary list are we together now someone spoke for the students a voice that i honor that we honor i supervised the supplementary list by myself there were three people that i honor with every esteem in my life and when three of them called me i said no 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 i'm under authority too bring all the forms of the students who did not get the admission you, you were just sitting in your house and you saw an alert and they said congratulations but someone spoke for you why has it stopped why should it not continue in other areas of your life that somebody will speak for you you are just sitting you see an alert with a phone number and you call and say who are you you say we were discussing and someone mentioned your name it has happened to me it happens all the time pray one minute and say lord help us financial help us please ignore people who think you're wasting your time pray this prayer with faith lord son help us the house of god needs help us my family needs the ministry of help us need at this point in my life is a genuine helper no string attached no thank you for investment but what I need now is not an investment I need a helper a helper my family is about packing up I need a helper Please don't joke. This is your destiny. This is a kingdom secret that can wipe your tears. I cry for a helper. The gift of men. He gave gifts unto men. He gave gifts unto men to the end that they be established. He gave gifts to men the end that could be helped in the time of recession he's still giving gifts to men in the time of lack and want oh I believe I believe I believe I believe Jesus this is someone's breakthrough tonight I believe I believe, I believe. Who said the medical bills must be paid through salary? Who said the helper cannot arise and wipe it? Who said the roofing of the house must be done by your savings? What is a God in heaven who can arise from men? Hallelujah. Please sit down. I tell you, my spirit is stirred with what I'm telling you. Many of you will thank me. You will see your lives change overnight. Don't mind people who think what I'm sharing with you is not making sense. I show you what can change your life. Brothers and sisters, is one of the biggest secrets of this work you see by the grace of God. There are few things in this ministry, let me tell you. There are few things in this ministry, few things in this ministry that are actively being paid for from the central house. Every week, every time, there is somebody rising to handle something. When we used to use other venues, there are people who just arise and say, look, I will pay for the venue. I will pay for this. How much does it cost to transport people all through after service? I will pay for it. Don't think it's everybody who must say, what will I get in return? 
There are people, whatever you want to give them, God has given them already. They don't need anything. They just want to bless you. What is man that thou art mindful of? Number four, what is the implication of the presence of men in your life? I call it impartation, access to impartation and the prophetic. Access to impartation and the prophetic. Why do you need men in your life? Their presence can guarantee you access to impartation. What is impartation? Transference of grace for possibilities. Transference of grace for possibilities. Men move according to the kinds and the dimensions of graces at work in them. No matter how you cry for God to anoint you, if you ignore men, you will never. Do you know, look at me. Some of you, all you need in your life is just that prophetic push. Prophetic push. Bishop Oyedeko said every time they are busy celebrating winners and saying, wow, this is how the ministry has risen. They will just go to Papa Ia Deboe and you just lay hands on him and say, you have seen well, but a new level. And that's the end of it. Prophetic push is capital. It can bless your life. It can wipe your tears. One prophetic word. I've shared with you countless testimonies here to the glory of God. Maybe I'll just review one or two. Remember the story I told you about the two women? I went to buy sugar cane. And two mama, old women, old women. I'm not sure they could even speak English. And they were trying to remove, they were trying to, uh, um, what do they call it? Yes, to remove the wrapper so that they remove the small money to pay for sugar cane. And I said, uh -uh, I may not have much, but come on, these are my mothers. Let me bless them. And I just bought the sugar cane. I don't think I spent up to 100 naira. I can't remember how much exactly. And those women were so touched. They were blessing me and blessing me. And one of them said, my son forever walk upon gold. How can a woman who is trying to remove five naira, she knew what she carried on her head. Listen, don't wait for people's physical result to believe they have it. You will be joking. You may see a man with 10 members, but he, must ha he can have a kingmaker anointing. He can anoint you and you have a stadium full of membership. If all you are looking for is someone else's result, no. Some results are not meant to appear physically. They are meant to be transferred and reflected in the life of another. It's called a kingmaker anointing. They never become kings themselves. Yet they are the ones who anoint and throne and dethrone kings. Those of you who have kings in your village, you know there are people who sit down with the kings. They are called kingmakers. They never become kings themselves. Yet they are the ones who consecrate kings. Saul never became a king himself. But he was the one who made kings. And he was the one through God who rejected kings. Let me tell you, there are people who carry graces. They may not physically look like it. They may not be millionaires, but they never lack. Quarter to shame, God will always arise. That's a grace you need. Because all you need in life is not just money. Bishop Oedeko calls it the grace of on time. When things come too late, they can kill you. They should come on time. How he got that anointing, he said he was a particular man of God. I don't know if it was Archbishop Benson Idahosa or whoever it was who, he, you know, sent him on errand, sent to Edeko on errand then when he was just starting and to show up at a particular time. And the person showed up fast and, and Oedeko showed up fast. And then the man looked at him and said, ah, you mean you came at the time? He said, from today, I impart upon you the grace of on time before a need arises. The supply comes. There is such a grace. Now, you may see people move. They are not millionaires. But they, they carry that possibility. The moment shame is about to come, something must happen to change that result. It's a grace. Impartation. By God's grace, we have lavishly received impartations in this place. Impartation. I have received impartations. I'm like a bee. I'm a product of strange graces. 
Jesus himself being the chiefest of them all. But there are human vessels. There are men who have entered my life and just wiped my tears in certain areas. Impartation. And then a prophetic push. I told you prophecy is both revelatory and creative. The more superior dimension of prophecy is the creative dimension. Revelatory dimension gives you faith and direction. But when you get to the end of your road, you need the creative dimension of prophecy. Where someone can look at your life and say, look, physically speaking, there is no hope. But in the name of Jesus, I introduce a reality, an equation into your life. I was teaching in, in, in Akure and I told them the anointing is, the, is an advantage. It's an advantage. It's an advantage. It's an advantage. Prophecy. This ministry you see, there are constant prophecies being bombarded on our heads. Prophecy. Prophecy. Where is the prophetic voice pushing you to the next level? Where is the prophetic voice? That's why every time I minister here, I pray and I speak over your life from the depth of my heart. It's not just copy men of God. I understand the power of the prophetic. Second Chronicles 20.20 20. It says, believe in the Lord your God, so shall he be established. Then it says, believe his prophets so shall you prosper in other words don't believe them and what happens to you it says and by a prophet the lord brought israel out of egypt and by a prophet were they preserved the prophetic is real not just calling names and numbers but the ability to speak realities into being taking an advantage of this mystery the capacity to create things because everything that appears comes from the unseen realm so a man can program your destiny through prophecy like an alarm clock you can program an alarm clock to ring at a time you see that you program an alarm clock 327 and the clock will be quiet as if it's dead 327 on the dot that's how a man's destiny can be programmed a man can shift a breakthrough that should happen when you are 49 to happen when you are 25 prophecy prophecy can shift possibilities to and fro you must understand this by this time tomorrow elisha said he didn't say god told me by this time tomorrow when he met the shunammite woman he said what should i do to you should i talk to the king he said no no i live among my own people what should i he said well we don't have a child hear what he said he placed a time that one of the ministry of the prophetic is to place a time for your miracle because the clock must ring. He said to appoint unto them that morning Zion. To appoint. So something that would have happened next year, they take it and make it happen next week. It's a superior dimension of the prophetic. A woman will be coming here, I'm sure, one of these days to share her testimony. She sent a testimony that touched me. Now, this is not the first time we're getting these testimonies, but they are very powerful. I don't have time to look for it in my phone, but I will tell you, she said, I think we were in a program. I don't know which of the meetings now, whether in Yola or whatever. Yes, they were part of those who uh, were in the welfare cooking, cooking for us. And I always pray for all those who cook, those who drive me and cook for me every time I go for any meeting. Now, I prayed for the woman and according to her, she said, I told her that, what do you want? And she said she wanted twins. And she said it jokingly. And I said, in the name of Jesus, may the Lord give you twins. Nothing really happened. She got pregnant two weeks after that time. That's the first news. This is a woman that had been barren. And, but when they checked her, there was only one child. Glory be to God. That's all right. At least I'm happy that I'm pregnant now. And she said just like, um, I think, maybe a month ago, they went back to check and they were twins. Twins right there. You see that? She sent me a text actually because she started having some little pain like birth pains and they were saying most likely they will use cs so she shared that testimony and she was trying to encourage me to pray for her so she can give birth you know safely and then come and testify the creative dimension of prophecy that can place realities 
children just come through a man they come from God the moment Mary said be it unto me she was pregnant it's just the body of the child and the genetics that come through the man children are a heritage from the Lord he said when he led captivity captive he gave gifts to men the question I want to ask you tonight before we pray is have you received your own because the Bible says that he gave those gifts to the end that we attain a level you have not attained that level meaning you have not received those gifts have you received the strategies the ideas the wisdom have you received the endorsements accreditations hmm. have you received financial and material resources I'm speaking to somebody from the depth of my heart there are testimonies I can begin to share with you now but if I say some of these testimonies that they are not it's not even safe for some of us because it may just push you through seasons you are not ready for but brothers and sisters let me tell you the truth anybody that tells you that God cannot fast track the life of a man is he joking look at my life look at my life I've heard of testimonies of people in this recession people have arisen and done things you cannot imagine one of the gifts that God has given me in my life I draw me to the leaders and the workers all the time is the gift of men the gift of men is greater than money the gift of men is greater than money there are some things money cannot do are we together listen if you labor on to death I've given this example here you labor on to death and you get five naira and somebody walks up and gives me five naira are, are five naira is the same no your sweat and your life was drained for that five naira it's, it's called the mystery of hardship when you work for everything you know we encourage diligence here but your lifetime is not enough for you to get every result by working you need an advantage and that advantage is shrouded in men not oil not real estate not banking men 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 who have you ignored in your life whose voice must speak for you in this season it's not that there are no jobs there are people getting jobs every time just like someone is about to get one now but who is speaking for you oh there are no contracts please keep quiet don't say there are no contracts with 7.2 billion people on earth are you joking there are no contracts there is no contract for you but there's contract but a voice can make it for you come and do a miracle a miracle today you will do a miracle a miracle today listen when you get into trouble hear me who speaks for you there are some of us it's not all about money when you get into trouble who speaks for you there are some of us if things don't work out in our lives we are dead there's nobody to arise and speak for you the bible says valiant men came to david they entered a covenant that they must make him king who is ready to die to see that your cause you criticize a man of god and there's nobody to back him no sir there should be somebody no 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 no. don't say this against pastor femi I love him. Are we together? They just said they ate some money in your office. You are about to be thrown out. You are in trouble. And you are innocent. Just because you are working in the accounts department. They are about to jail you. In the prison. In the, in the police station. There is nobody to speak for you. Before the law court. Nobody to speak for you. They are about to throw you in. Nobody to speak for you. Hapa. That's a life with no favor. That every time trouble arises, somebody will come and say, look, ordinarily speaking, you are supposed to do A and B and C to Emeka, but I come in. 
Have you seen people who when they are fighting, they come and stand and say, don't beat this person. It's better to beat me. Who can cover you like that? Politicians call them Godfather, God whatever. Brothers and sisters, we have ignored this to our detriment. One of the blessings God has given me in my life is not just divine immunity and protection. God has raised men, I can tell you this, men who will stand and they won't mind blood coming out of their bodies to make sure they protect my interests and what we represent. And I do not take them for granted, but I am grateful. I have been shocked. A man of God somewhere once said something that was not too nice about me. And I mean, that person, I, I didn't even know. It was when he apologized. More than 100 people called him, blasted nonsense out of his life. I said, God will punish you and punish you and join and punish you. You mix every, the baby and the bad water and think everybody. It was something that was trying to show maybe like all these men, those, you, you know, you know what I mean now. Maybe somebody put his hand in something that is ungodly. Time shall tell. You know those kind of sarcastic statements. And my goodness. And I'm not talking of young people. Married women. The person will say his testimony and blast the man and say, are you stupid? The man sent me a text. He thought I knew about it, honestly speaking. It was when I got it. I said, no, 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 no. No offense. I don't have what. Why, why? I mean, I don't keep any offense. What for? Can you have people like that? There are men who can arise to cover your shame. Just because they know you, they will arise and say, no, 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 no. I will cover your shame for you. We have some prayers to pray this night. If our parents had this, they would not be struggling like this. Because every other person who has risen has exactly what they have. Educationally, whatever it is. No help. No help. No help. You work hard, you go to school, almost as if you would die, you graduate and your, your certificate becomes like a toilet tissue. Nobody to speak on it. The only thing there is the registrar's signature. And life will look at you and say, no, I need another signature. Come on, this is, this, is, this is too regular. Show me another one. You are praying and fasting. But you need to start praying strategically. Don't just pray and say, Lord, send angels. Yes, angels are important. But you need a physical entity moved by those angels. There was a particular time they were going to this. Paul was afraid of entering a city. And God said, no, no, don't be afraid. I have many people there. Nobody will touch you. I have many people, many men there. I'm tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. I'm tired of the status quo. There's gotta be more than this. There's gotta be more, gotta be more. There's gotta be more than this. There's gotta be more, gotta be more. There's gotta be more than this. Listen, one of these four things will become your prayer point. I'm going to give us 10 minutes and I will not interrupt you. 10 minutes alone with God. You know what aspect. The Bible says he gave gifts unto men. Ask God, Lord, where is my own? Where is my own gift? Where is the man you have sent with the financial blessing? Where is the man you have sent, oh God, with the prophecy for my next level? Where is the man you have sent with the idea? Where is the man to endorse my life, my ministry? Ten minutes. Please, I don't know how you will pray. But the next ten minutes, instrumentalists help us. Cry before the God of heaven. And say, Lord, I want to receive my own gift. You are giving gifts to men. Spiritual exploits through the ministry of men. 
gave strategies through men unto men. He gave wisdom to men. Pray. He gave endorsement. He gave recommendations. He gave access to platforms through men unto men. Through men unto men. Are you praying? Don't be distracted. Keep praying. Hello, him Adonai. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Hello, him Adonai. Thy kingdom come. In this season of triumph, oh God. Enough of delay. Enough of delay. Lord, I'm tired of struggling. What man away. One man away. That man must show up in my destiny. the Lord. Listen, listen. The Lord gave me a promise that when I teach this message, he will release radical breakthroughs to the lives of men. Believe this. You will hear of people's lives changing overnight. Overnight. If you have never believed a man of God in your life, can't you just believe for once? Doesn't your spirit bear witness that this is the key to what brought you here man an advocate man listen listen he said they are taken for a prey but none say yet restore they capture you but there is no man to shout restore prayer point number one oh god whoever holds the strategy the wisdom the idea that I need to experience triumph. I open the gates of my spirit and I receive them as gifts. Go ahead and pray. The gift, the gift of wisdom, the gift of understanding, the gift of strategies, business strategies through men, Strategies through men. One man can change your company. One man can change your business. One man can link you up with what ten years has not been able to give you. One man can open up the gates of ministry. Send that man, oh God. Send that woman, oh God. Send that man, oh God. Send that woman, oh God. I open the gates of my spirit. 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 I receive them as gifts. Hallelujah. 
one man one man the difference between you and the next level prayer point number two listen father i have the talent i am ready for the next level but there is no ladder to climb the voice that must endorse me for the next level i call you by prophecy lift your voice and pray the voice endorsing my papers the voice endorsing my products the voice endorsing my services the voice endorsing the hand of god on my life i call you in the name of jesus prophesy 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 it's time to rise somebody somewhere has what it takes to speak for you somebody somewhere has what it takes to speak for you call them call them koinonia call them call them for your family call them for your life the man to endorse your marriage the man to endorse access to the man of god who carries the grace you need the man to endorse your business the man to endorse your employment Lord, I'm a master's holder. I'm ready for the job. I need an endorser. I'm a PhD holder. I'm a graduate. I need an endorser. Lord, I'm a businessman. I have paid my price. I have done my homework. I need a voice. A voice to speak at the gate. hallelujah hallelujah listen let me tell you something if you are a parent here yeah, everything you pay you pray for yourself pray for your children whether they are in your womb or they are everywhere i hear what i'm saying if you're a lady here as you pray you lay your hands on your womb. you don't wait till you get married come on john was filled with the holy ghost in his water's womb you can speak favor to be waiting for that 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 child formed in favor prayer point number three you are going to cry now listen 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 i told you there is the sovereign dimension of god's will you are going to cry for help help don't cry for money lord a helper can come i call him to my life lift your voice and pray Masataka parataka tokates, a helper, a helper. Are you praying? A helper. A helper. A helper. It can be this difficult. It can be this difficult. It can be this difficult. Bring a helper to make my life easy, oh God. So that I can have the time to serve you. So that I can have the concentration to focus on my assignment. Lord, I'm tired of financial distractions. Lord, I'm tired of material destructions. Send a helper to clear the way that I can serve you. Send a helper. Are you praying? Are you pray, don't look around, pray. Shaka takata, leke te proto soto kete, e proto soto kota, e helper must show up, e helper must show up, e helper must show up. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. The last prayer point. Kai, I tell you, I'm, 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 I, I feel the joy in my spirit for the prayers we are praying. I know this prayer is doing something in the realm of the spirit. The last prayer point. I want you to pray this with all your heart. You are going to cry and say, Lord, the prophetic push. That one you can have it this night, right now. That one is available for you. It's up for you to receive. You are going to pray and say, Lord, the prophetic push, that push I need, that impartation, that prophetic push for my ministry, for my life, for my family. Lord, my family is in hellfire. We must come out this night. Lift your voice and pray. Pray outside, pray. Online, pray. Wherever you're connecting from any nation of the world, pray, pray. Pray your way to a new level. Pray your way to a new dimension. Pray your way. Shaka taka ta. Reko to 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 to. Reko sopo to to bas. Ebra kata naka to se to to. Reko se to 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 to. Neke to 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 to. Shapa to 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 to. Reko to so to 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 to. Pray. Hallelujah. Listen. Never forget this kingdom key. It's a mystery that has been responsible for the, the mysterious rising of stars. No father, no mother, notwithstanding, they rose. No education, no experience, notwithstanding, they rose. Come on now. Life delayed and battered. The enemy ate a major part of their life, but in one year they recovered through men. Through men. Never forget this. He gave gifts to men. He gave gifts to men. Man of God, I'm 45 years. I've wasted my life. Don't worry. One man, one man can step into your life and answer the question of 10 years. Man of God, my business is grounded. Listen, listen. Do you know, while the Lord asked me to prepare for this message, I was watching Channels TV and I saw how that Eric L was about to pack up because they were in debt. It was so much. And imagine a big, one of the biggest airlines in the country. I love them, of course. I know that there are people who work there who might be listening right now. And for me, I felt so sad because I know how our administration depends on that airline alone. There are places only them can go and I started thinking, I said, my God, that means there has to be another plan. And the only other plan can be chartered services. And all of a sudden, I just had that Amcon representing the federal government said they are too they are too important to let them crash and they said we are coming to wage you i said this is my message this is my message the federal government how many airlines i don't want to mention names have crashed in our presence federal government waved them and said you, you are in debt but that a man is almost falling and then a hand picks him you are too valuable to fall so I help you listen so you are making a mistake and you are about to die you don't even know what kingdom key then God wake somebody to start interceding for you because you are too valuable before you catch the revelation someone else is already praying for you lift your hands I want to pray honestly God sees my heart and God knows that I'm praying this prayer from the depth of my heart don't worry whether you are standing or not just a sign of faith I want to pray for you 
the Lord has declared that it's this year of triumph. Let's not make him look like a liar. You've heard the testimonies of people. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, the sovereign Lord, the one who orchestrated this message, I pray for you. Prophecy number one is that in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, beginning from this night, a man, everybody one by one, a man must show up in your destiny. A man must show up in your destiny. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Paul said, once and again I desire to come to you, but Satan hindered us. Satan hinders men. There are some of you, God answered your prayer since last year. But there is a spirit somewhere sitting on your breakthrough. In the name of Jesus. I'm, I'm prophesying. I'm just speaking in tongues. In the name of Jesus, every force sitting on your gate to make it not open for your helpers, I cast those forces out of your life. I cast those forces out of your life. I cast those forces out of your life. Listen, whether it's an activity of witchcraft, an activity of causes, projections of men in their anger, the scourging tongues of men to cause the constellations to fight you, in the name of Jesus Christ, who died and rose again, I command your gates open. I command your gates open. I break the power of divination. I break yokes and curses. I break the power of divination. When Jesus got to the grave of Lazarus, others were crying, but they did not know even in the grave, if a man comes, resurrection can happen. The grave was there, waiting for a man. When Jesus came, he said, Ah, uh -uh, hold on, Lazarus. Only the voice of a man could call another man, not the voice of an animal, the voice of a man. And he said, Lazarus, come for. Come for. Come for. I want to call some things. I want to call some things back. They left you, but they are not missing. They are still on earth. They left you, but hear me, they are not missing. In the name of Jesus Christ, Kabato Koto Paratia, Embre Tokoto Pereke to Shapariata, Ratata, Rata Reko Sobariata. I prophesy, whatever has left your life, whatever has left your hands, money that you lost, business that you lost, relationships, opportunities, I prophesy restoration now. Restoration now. Restoration now. Listen, listen. I don't care what happened. I, I don't want to know the story behind it. In the name of Jesus Christ, even if it's a body part that disappeared, I call a new one now. Whatever is the works of your hands that for some reason you do your best but it's like it cannot break through some levels. There are people here who are business people. There are people here who are working and they've been in the same position forever. There are people who don't just move forward in the name of Jesus. Whatever has tied your feet so that there is no speed in your life, I command supernatural speed right now. 
supernatural speed right now supernatural speed right now hallelujah was he pray listen there are men being influenced by demons to stop the moment the God the spirit of God is moving the will of a man to your favor they show up just like a man shows up they show up and they impart fear there are people who would have done your business but just when they wanted to put money somebody said be careful oh and they went away there are people who would have bought your product in box but someone showed up and said do you really need it in the name of Jesus whoever is stopping men from blessing you whoever is being used by demon spirits to stop men from blessing you I silence their voices right now I silence their voices right now every council of Ahitophel speaking in dark places against the people of God I reverse their pronouncements right now hallelujah last prayer point and Jesus grew in stature in wisdom in stature and in favor with God you can have favor with God and not have favor with men I want to speak favor we must attack hardship and do you know listen listen by now you know but do you know why we do these things because we want to concentrate on doing the work of the kingdom. These things are distractions. Thinking about money is a distraction. Thinking about all these, all these jargons. You can't pray. You spend three hours. You are not praying for souls. You are praying out of against trouble. It's a distraction. You can't have the peace to plan your family well. Because you sit down and there's tension everywhere. Why? Because of all kinds of issues. In the name of Jesus, I pray. May a fresh mantle of favor, a mantle of favor, a real solid mantle of favor, may it land upon your life right now. Favor with men, favor with men, receive it in the name of Jesus. Favor with men, I place it upon your life. Favor with men, favor with strangers, favor with men favor with strangers favor with diplomats favor with men of God favor with politicians favor with business people in the name of Jesus listen every time a man is looking for someone to bless may you show up there suddenly in the name of Jesus Christ anytime they are discussing someone to lift May the angel of the Lord introduce your name. Hallelujah. The angel saluted Mary and said, Hail Mary, thou art favored among all women. And she wondered, what manner of salutation is this? These are the forces that produce certain strange levels of breakthrough. Tomorrow you will turn and see that things are working for you. And people say, how did you do it? You are no more qualified than me. Your father is nobody in the society. And you tell them, I understood that there is something called the gift of men. The gift of men. The gift of men. The gift of men in your life. And it will change your life. Lord Jesus, we thank you for tonight. Lord, I have declared your word to your people. In the name of Jesus, let there be a strange performance. We release angels to compel the men that we have called by prophecy. Because some of them have stubborn wheels, but we compel them by the ministry of angels. And we decree and declare that they must show up for every life, business, destiny, and ministry. In the name of Jesus. May your life from tonight receive a quantum leap. 
may you have a testimony that will end worry from your life forever and let me just use one minute and extend this prayer to our worrying families because some of our family members they are almost depressed to death the yoke on their head is too much it's as if they are carrying the whole world there are bills here there's trouble here there's court case here there is police case here there is the, nobody to help them lord jesus we pray anyone standing here may you represent your family right now as i pray in the name of jesus christ using you as a prophetic point of contact I pray for your loved ones. The same thing God is doing here. May he reproduce it to them. Every impossible situation in any family right now that looks like it defies solution this night, may a helper qualified to help arise and help. If it's a financial problem, may a helper arise to help. If it's a marital and family problem, may a stranger arise and help. In the name of Jesus Christ. If it's a spiritual problem, may a man with an anointing appear and help. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Keep standing everyone. There are people here right now, this night. Inside, outside. Please keep standing everyone. You've heard everything I've said tonight and you know that this concerns you. The greatest man that needs to show up in your life is the man Jesus. The Bible calls him the man Jesus. Jesus the man. He says come unto me. He was not speaking as a ghost. A man come unto me. Right? Behold I stand at the door of your heart and I knock. There are men and women here right now hearing me. And thousands following online. You've not made your way right with Jesus. Things are not all right. When you are not right with Jesus, any other thing is just temporary. He is the chief man. They call him the fourth man in the fire. When he entered the fire, that was the end of it. He must enter into your life. The greatest rebellion is to willfully reject Jesus. There are people inside and outside. Some of you at one point or the other, you made a decision. But sincerely this night, as you've heard us pray, as you've heard me teach, the Holy Spirit had been pricking your heart to say, look, you need to make things right with Jesus Christ. You need to receive him like you receive a gift. You've been around him, but you've not received him. Or you have received him and for some reason things have gone haywire. And you're saying, man of God, if you would pray for me, I would not be ashamed to come out. Wherever you, you are, we have two, three minutes for you. Any of the overflows inside, outside there, please don't be ashamed. Don't wait for anyone. He's the man that must show up in your life. Wherever you are, as they begin to clap for them, please make your way to the front. You're rededicating your life. You're giving your heart to Jesus. You are welcome. Quickly, please. Quickly. There are people God is speaking to. Don't wait for anybody to come out. You are the first person. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Nasa Hanuna Hakan Kekenoma Nina Yesune Bazankoma Bazankoma Keep coming. Hurry up. Keep coming. Hallelujah. Please keep coming. Let's celebrate them as they come. If there are still people outside, make your way. Don't say it's too far. Make your way. Let that man step into your life. The man Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming. Some of you are giving your heart to the Lord seriously for the first time. And others, you are rededicating your life, everything. Doesn't matter what category. I love you and I honor you for this bold decision. I just want you to pray this prayer after me from the depth of your heart. Don't pray it as a recitation. Pray it sincerely as a prayer that can change your life. Are we together? Say after me, Lord Jesus. Say it, Lord Jesus. 
I love you with all my heart and I believe that you are the son of God tonight I invite you I welcome you as that man that will change my life please change my life I receive your life in exchange for mine and I declare that from tonight I am saved I'm a child of God the life of God is in me my past is gone forever and he gives me a new beginning in the name of Jesus let me pray for you father thank you for these ones I love them from the depth of my heart Jesus you are the man they have received right now please change their lives let it not be an emotional decision men have prophetic implications you left this earth bodily the man Jesus we pray in the name of your son father grant that their lives be changed forever in the name of Jesus Christ thank you heavenly father in Jesus name I pray amen and amen I'd like you to follow the gentleman waving his hands and um, they would have your details and then we'll follow up on you um, more personally the Lord bless you and the Lord honor you in Jesus name just follow the gentleman at the back my dear this way you can follow the gentleman please appreciate them very quickly Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Bashka na kata branda kete kotos kete branda kata pa kotos koto breke te kene kata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.